What is up, buds? Welcome to Weed D&D, the Pot Positive Live tabletop role-playing experience. I am your Dungeon Master for the night, Brandon Allen McClenahan, but my buds call me Bam. Holy shit, dudes. Totally pumped to be back. What a week, man. Uh, big, big stuff. Uh, I hope everybody had a wonderful, safe, happy uh, July 4th. Big celebration. I hope some of you got to see some of your friends and faces as we kind of start adjusting back to... Uh, to being able to see those things again, man. It's absolutely lovely. Uh, we had us a wonderful little weekend. I think we're still probably recovering from it a little bit because our big man, Drew Thorkus Onyx Heart, Yana More, turned a big 4-0 this past weekend. Happy belated birthday to the man himself. You'll get to see him here in just a minute after I gab jai at you for a while. Um, I did just want to take a second to shout out one of our uh, partners real quick, Legend Craft. They're this incredible woodworking company. They do all kinds of gaming accessories, uh, including massive gaming tables that they make and stuff. Uh, the guys over there are super awesome dudes, and they were really helpful with us in the early staging point of this, kind of reaching out and setting up one of our first partnerships. So I, I just got to shout them out. If you do go over to legendcraft.ca and uh, find anything that you like over there, you can type Weed D and D W E E D N D as your coupon code, you'll get 5% off and the show full admittance gets a little kickback as well. So you can help get yourself some sweet gaming accessories. Honestly, I love their magnet trackers. I have one ordered and I'm just waiting for it to get here. Um, but they have all kinds of like really useful little wood and they're beautifully made uh, stuff. So check them out. Uh, Legendcraft.ca. They are super awesome guys and proud partners of ours. Uh, and they're they just a bunch of awesome people who art hard, which is kind of like our whole thing around here. Uh, on that note, we have started releasing some of our art time lapses over on the YouTube. If you're not uh, following us or subscribed over us uh, on YouTube, it is youtube.com backslash art hard studios. Uh, we drop all our seshes every week. Our live sesh goes uh, Friday at 420. You can catch it if you missed it or got too high and forgot something, which happens too. Um, or uh, I have some of my map making stuff on there. And uh, we've got art coming in from John Gilchrist. Uh, he, we just dropped his uh, his general's map there. Uh, man, that was last week now. Um, so, but it's it's super awesome just to kind of start seeing. I just want everybody to just be aware of how much wonderful art uh, goes into this. In case you didn't know, all of our music is, is completely original, uh, created by the incredible Sandy Stein, who just continues to deliver us magic each and every fucking week and is incredible. And I cannot go another second without shouting out Vlad Kolonik, who is the art director for our team here. Um, and man, he just dropped series seven of the Monsters of Ganjari and the Monsters of Weed D&D uh, series, and it's fucking beautiful, man. So uh, if you're not a member of our Discord, hop over there. We'll drop a little link here in the chat. Um, definitely pop over there. We do a lot of art dumps over there and stuff like that. So if you want to kind of see some of the art behind the show before it comes into the show sometimes, uh, that's a good place to check it out. We also have a pretty massive uh, Facebook group over on uh, on the Facebook. Uh, it's called the Weed D&D Hub. And uh, shit, I think we just hit like 1,400 members or something the other day. It's a, it's a super fun, little awesome weed meme community. Uh, we do a little promote for the show there and stuff. But we also, Vlad is always super awesome about dropping his art stuff there. So if you're not following us across the various social medias, do yourself a favor and do that shit. Because we're having a lot of fun. And there is truly some like breathtaking creations being made in the works right now. Uh, I get little updates from all the different artists working on stuff. And this next like burst of stuff is just going to blow your mind. So thank you guys so much for all you do. Mad love to the buds of the Weed d community. You guys keep us going every single week. And uh, seriously, just with your consistent support, we, we fucking love you guys, man. No, no bullshit. We love you very much. So thank you guys for all you do. But honestly, I want to get to fucking playing some D&D, &D, which is, uh, you know, that's why we're all here. So in order to do that, I got to pass this magic joint here through the fibers of the interwebs to my dear and wonderful friend, Brenna Folger. Hey, Brenna. How you doing, girl? It's... Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Brenna Folger here, also Prince Bruno, the serpent, the serpent slayer. And I'm so excited to be back this week. Mm, it's Tuesday. And uh, guess what? My favorite ninja turtle is Raphael. Abby, what's your favorite ninja turtle? What an amazing question. Hey, everyone. Abby Dandy, a.k.a. Tennis Smooth Hands Round Me's part, level 10 halfling life cleric. Can you believe it? I am so amazed that we've come this far. It's wonderful. Chilling every week with the buds. But you know, now that I thought about it a little bit, Brenna, I think Michelangelo has to be my favorite. I, like, you know, that's just the only answer I could go with. What about you, Drew? This is, this is really a conundrum. <laughs> Thank you, baby. 
Uh, what up, y'all? Drew, Dorcas the Dwarf, Big Papa's level 10, triple digit hit points, y'all. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know there's only four, right? <laughs> then there's there's five of us, and then also, bam, like, that. there's going to be a double up. There's There has to be a double up, so I'm just going to go ahead and say yeah. it. Raphael, like. Yeah. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it again. Happy birthday, Drew. Oh, yeah. Because we love you so much. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. That's right. Legend. Stay in it. Love you, buds. Love you, baby. 40s. You know, just incredibly different, just so you know, from 39. Oh, my God. We'll so much has happened. But we'll get to it later on. Uh, yeah, Raphael, favorite. Let's do this. Best friend, air dropping it with a parachute. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Good stuff, best friend, and happy belated birthday. I love you so much. And I love all of you. I love all of you very much, and I'm so glad you're here. Jake Taylor, once again, is Real Authorvon, the level 10. I keep having to tell myself, I'm like, we're level 10 now. Arcane Trickster Rogue. And full disclosure, I didn't watch a lot of Ninja Turtles. I watched a lot more Power Rangers as a kid, but I always gravitated towards Leonardo. And if we're going out of Turtle, Casey Jones is a bad motherfucker. Love it. All right, you know who else I love? It's you right there, Ghost Langley. Ready for some weed? Uh, 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 shit. <laughs> Appreciate it, Jake. Uh, that's right, it is your boy, Gus, two blunts, Langley, and I will be playing your resident Revenant Divot, the Glamour Bard Warlock, uh, super fun guy. <laughs> um, yo, uh, I, that's a tough ass question. And asking somebody my age who their favorite Ninja Turtle is is like straight to the core of who you are as a human being. I feel like um, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm probably a little more Raphael than I want to admit. But I'm trying real hard to be a Michelangelo. Um, let me pass it over to Bam, y'all. <laughs> comes back in one piece every week. It's just, it's amazing. It transforms. You're seeing the power of transmutation right before your very eyes. Um, holy crap, guys. All right, so my favorite uh, Ninja Turtle. Again, you're right, Gus. This is a, a, an extremely deep uh, question. I would say I'm like, uh, I, all right, so I like Michelangelo in the mix, but Donatello on the sticks. Because in any video game, Donatello's fucking reach is like twice as far as every other Ridiculous. character's. So Incredible. why would you not play as Donatello? Like, oh, I'll just sit over here and poke you with my damn stick. Plus, he was the inventor. I changed my answer. Fucking Donatello all day, baby. Whole, whole way, all the way across the board, in the streets. Uh, Donatello's my man. Um, but God, I mean, you gotta love Mikey. I mean, Mikey, and I want one of the pizzas that they eat. Where do they get those pizzas with the cheese that does the... Does the oh, thing. they look so delicious. Oh, I want it so bad. I am once again thinking about the Ninja Turtle pizza. <laughs> that cheese pull. That cheese pull. Oh, oh my God. It's everything. Um, but basically, we d and the cheese pull of my own life, the thing that makes me feel as good as that stretchy cheese from a nice cartoon pizza that some dog ends up eating or something. I don't know. Anyway, guys, we got a little ritual we like to do around here. Maybe you've heard about it. Maybe you haven't. But uh, we like to take a lighter like this little crit with some lightning bolts on it. Make sure we're not going to light any of our friends, family, or household pets on fire and go. Lighter's up. Ooh. Oh, man. Let's play some of that good, good D&D. Mm. We d and high fantasy, literally for you and me. So load up. Man, that fucking intro every time, dude. Like, all week, I'm like, oh, I hope my d and is good for my friends. And then I hear that theme song, and I'm like, I am about to just mind screw my friends. <sighs> Sorry, I got a little excited.
It's that theme song. Sandy Stein, the man. All right, guys. Shit. If you will please allow me to set the mood. Mm. When last we left the Ferocious Five, they had just received an ominous threat from the dreaded Captain Crefus, member of the renowned bounty hunters, the Drowned Hounds. As they feasted in celebration of their victory over the risen green dragon Harnax, the joyful sounds of hearth and home were pierced by the sharp cry of hundreds of crows, as the scent of salt water washed through the town, serving as harbinger of Crefus's arrival. It was Brunor who first recognized the dread captain as he brazenly entered the Dancing Dragon Inn. So keenly aware of the heights of the destruction capable of he and his ilk, she recommended caution to the five and allowed the captain his chance to speak. You have the privilege of being hunted by the drowned towns. Meet us to the south and bring your A-game. He uttered before disappearing into a convergence of crows. The, city of, the safety of the city of Amarella itself at risk, the five set to preparing as Thoricus fused the bones of the great dragon found within the den of Zulathax into a great suit of armor. At long last, the five have their feet set in the earth firmly beneath them, and now they must decide how best to proceed from here. Mm. All right, guys, we jump back in. <laughs> You're all standing in the village of Emerella, you know, surrounded by the trees that ever change by the day as this, this taint, this corruption of the Feywild and the Shadowfell that seems to be bleeding into the Prime Material Plane continues to get worse and worse. You see trees of summer, spring, winter, and autumn surrounding this small, you know, uh, forest village with the, with the sharp peaks of the Malachite Mountains as, as the backdrop to the city with its large tattered windmill. You know, you hear the sh splash in the water as the electric blue tentacle snatches up what the, the remaining crow feather that was kind of drifting down the river uh, ominously. You know, this, this tentacle leaves this big burst in the sky and Brunor, as you look at it, you know what the intent of this message is. The drowned hounds know at any time they could destroy this city. And they're almost toying with you guys, playing with your connection and your love of this location. Tina, your church being nearby. Brune or Thoricus, your bond with the children of the town. You know, uh, Rial and Divot both having very powerful connections to what really defined you as people here in this place. Divot having died here uh, one of the times. And uh, Rial, your big, your big moment with the church and kind of that... The, the the quest of the child Esmeralda and what you would what would you would learn just after you left here last, you know that you can't help but as the water settles, you know, kind of peer around you, listening for the caw of crows. There is none. That smell of salt water, although fleeting, still lingers in the air. You feel the sticky salt of of you know of, of each breath inside of your mouth and nose, but it is dwindling away. You know the the storm of the kind of horror of Captain Crefus seems to have faded away. You're all standing by the forge to the north side of town where, you know, Thoricus has just put the finishing touches on both a ring for Divot uh, to contain the uh, a, a, a dose of the black tar that you've pulled from, uh, from the, the Shadowfell taint. Uh, and Thoricus yourself, freshly, you know, looking nice and minted new in your in your Tommy uh, Power Ranger armor, the White Ranger armor that you made, you know, with white and gold accents. Um, all of you, you know, kind of laying eyes on this this creation of Thoricus. You know, it's again, it's one thing to know that you travel with with you know one of the world's most renowned blacksmiths. It is another thing entirely to see his work. You know, and as it, as you watch as it kind of form fits to his body as he steps out of the uh, out of the forge, you can see that it's like you know you don't hear the clamping of the of the plates on each other. It moves with no sound, but yet seems stout. You know, you can tell it can really take a hit. So you know, Thoricus kind of steps out, and you're all standing there by the top of this forge. You know, the, the threat of the drowned hounds to your south, the threat of Ulara and, and the shale and Vegeta, Vegeta shale fist to the north. Um, you know, many enemies on all sides, not to mention Queen Mab uh, and Queen Titania and the Druid Achaeus floating in an island in the sky. The sun still frozen in place as it has been since we began our tale. 
You all feel that lack of night again as that tension, the fear, the, the air in the city around you starts to boil a little bit. Um, you know, you can see the Shamanastas and the Burakans that saw this spectacle. They all seem shook too. Again, they're, they're very powerful warriors, but they are mortals. Uh, and they're not quite used to seeing these displays of high magic that you guys have become so familiar with and have started displays, high magic displays of your own. Uh, if you recall the rave from a few sessions ago. <laughs> So yeah, you guys are kind of standing here in the city, you know, all of these these many pieces, you know, Divot, your conversation with death still looming in your mind. Um, this this notion that you may have to work with Queen to, uh, Queen Mab, uh, the, the Lord of, of Ice and Shadow, um, in order to affect the ending that death says is the one that you would prefer. Whether or not he's to be believed, you know, that's up to you guys. Yeah, um, I but, believe it's what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up to him, yeah. So, uh, so yes, you know, you all kind of stand there. You can't help but see the children. You know, the little Burakin child that was by the water that saw the tentacle is still kind of frozen there, just kind of looking around, like unsure of what to do. You see him backing away from the water. You know, the, the mood of everybody gets, gets a lot more tense as they all seem to be kind of looking over to you for answers after seeing this swarm of crows, this pirate man appear out of nowhere, this strange electric blue tentacle. You know, you can kind of feel the eyes and ears of the villagers kind of peering over to you guys. What do you do? Cha, I don't think that we will have time to go try to talk to my sister, who I guess is now a queen. <clears throat> we probably just need to go south and take care of the situation. I would have to agree with you. I mean, the settlement <coughs> for the mother goddess has just been built here. I, I, I don't want it destroyed, and all these people along with it. We definitely want to keep this place safe. And as I'm speaking aloud, I am sending a mental message to best friend. It's like, looking good. As soon as he walked out in that, so it was just like, oh. oh. I was going to say, is no one going to, I mean, not one of you, you look awesome. say anything about this? <laughs> you, you look awesome, no, you look I work so hard. hard. <laughs> yeah, you look real good. That's some cool, cool ass armor. <laughs> Run <laughs> and shine like the sun. Is <laughs> no one gonna mention how good I look? Because of you. <laughs> the sun is because of you. That's not yeah, my. That's fun don't, 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 don't you put that evil on me. But you were there. <laughs> yeah. You look good. Yeah. yeah. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, yeah, it was, it, it, it was a half plate mm. male, uh, so it, I kind of halved it so I could be more dexterous and, and deadly, but still raise my AC and, yeah, <laughs> add a little darkness to it, and I got necrotic resistance now, and, uh, so instead of a half plate male, I just call it my hate male. Mm. Oh, yeah. Nice. Hate, bring in the hate male. I love it. And a hate <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, right, Thoricus, you can't help but notice, you know, as you look across the expanse of the town, just peering through the window of the Dancing Dragon Inn is the other Smith brand. He's just like, <gasps> he's got his face, so you can see like the breath from his mouth as he presses against the glass, just staring at your masterful creation, you know, one blacksmith to another. Um, you hear the thud of what you can only imagine is his boner against the wall. Wow! But yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the wow. sound effect, though. You didn't have to, but you did. And I'm glad you did. Going, going That's why you come here every week, guys. It's, it's quality <laughs> sound effects like that. <laughs> he did have a cool hat. I mean, we should go south and deal with Brunor's thing. <laughs> is it Brunor's thing, or, or is it all of our things? It's kind of essentially all of our problem now. I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, specifically, he did not mention that it was just Brunor he was hunting, you know, okay. just to clarify. It is, it's bad. It, it is Either way, problem. if it's right. Brunor's problem, it's our problem. Oh, it yeah, no, right. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You really are two boys, you know? Chow, you. Cha. you really Cha. are two boys. Um, so, I mean, so I guess we should stock up on things that we need until then. Should we, is, uh, is what's his face ever going to come back with Ubre? What's her name? Oh, oh that's actually a great point. Um, 
you uh, you, you know you kind of look down the the pathway from where you know Kona would would, would ostensibly be coming from, and uh, instead you see a Barakan, uh, one of just the Barakan troops, one of the Barakan stone reavers, uh, comes out, and he has kind of a grave, heavy look on his face, and he's like kind of like looking around, and he finally connects eyes with you, Thorcus, and he gives you you know in one single look a whole like uh, you might you might want to come you might want to come over here. Uh, uh, he's like, uh, it's like you can tell he doesn't want to give you bad news, so he's just kind of like, uh, oh. right, uh, guys, let's let's just go see what Ubre needs real quick. Tina, you should probably just skip, just go fast. Yeah, we're gonna go. Please, oh. please, oh. it's a sure, okay. Yeah, let's go. yeah, yeah. Well, I could come. Yeah, please. We'll go all there. All yeah. the way. All right, sweet. Yeah, so you guys, uh, you know, you, you kind of follow the the gesturing of this uh, of this Burak and Stone Reaver, and he leads you over to the east side of the town. Again, rather than like a, a fusion of these two uh, different towns, they've just kind of added a Burakan area to the eastern side. You know, rather than start living in stone walls, you know, with with roof tiles and things like that, they've they've they would rather adhere to their customs. And so you see their battle tents, you know, as you walk over, you can see there's actually quite a few of them gathered around. Um, this kind of serves to be like where they stay when they're here. There's bed rolls, you know, littered on the grass and mud nearby. You can see a couple of them kind of hanging out near the graveyard, uh, you know, where you guys uh, had found that dragon digging around. Um, but yes, you see standing at, at the at the northernmost tent, you know, kind of like almost as if by guards. Uh, you see they're, they're standing there, and Toko's kind of ha- like grievously standing nearby. He's got one hand on the top of the tent. He's looking in. He lets out a heavy sigh as he turns and makes eye contact with you, Thoricus, as you guys walk up. Mm. Champion of the Raka, I do not fear that Ubre can move. Perhaps it best you visit her within. Maybe you can see what's wrong with her. You see, he just kind of gestures into the tent. Are we going to have a low voice talking contest now? Is that what's about to happen? I am a bugbear. I can speak very uh, deep. I forgot to do the same thing. Very deep. I got drunk as shit last night. I'd like to ask the bugbear if I can enter as yeah. well. I don't know if this is like a one. No, yeah, you guys are all I'm you're all headed thing. over there. Okay. Cool. Then I'd like to poke, poke my head in. All right, cool. You see, yeah. you know, as you guys kind of like start walking toward the entrance of the tent, you can smell the incense, you know, that she had burning as part of a ritual the last time that you saw her. Um, but the haziness is just kind of hanging around like a smoky pool hall. You know, it's just kind of this dank smoke that hangs in the air. It's not full of the like, kind of magical zest that surrounded this old woman before. You know, you peer through the tent. You see it's, you know, it's been double layered as to prevent the sun from coming in. So you kind of pull the thing back and there's just a beam of sunlight that lights up all the smoke and dust. You see the once powerful, you know, strong form of the of the withered old Ubre, the callous. You know, she had her her big staff last you saw her, but she she commanded the respect of the of the citizens of Burak and served as one of their leaders. Um, and so you see, she's kind of laying on the ground. You know, the the metal bowl that she used to toss bones in as part of her scrying rituals, and you know, the uh, her ability to see into the future. You know, she uh, gave each of you. Um, a fortune telling of sorts when last you came. You see, she, she's compl- she's just covered in sweat. Her old wrinkled skin just kind of hangs loosely on her bones. You see her gray hair, you know, kind of frizzled up from just being basically in this bed for, you know, probably a few days now. Um, she looks very tired as you all walk in, but you can see she kind of looks up and she's like, oh, yes, they return. Come. And you see she kind of you know, bends her wrinkled fingers to beckon you all within. Ew. I mean, hello. Stop. Oh, what? she kind of senses your, your hesitance. <laughs> do not fear, do not fear. I am an old woman. This is just age coming to visit. Oh, and she kind of lays down again, you know, gestures you all in. I come in so, for sure. Do I um, is do I recognize her ailment? Like, is she actually dying of age, or do I recognize something else at play? Give me a medicine check, Tina. You yeah. know, you kind of look at her. You know, between both of your being a cleric of life and your ability to kind of determine the magical health of a being, you also are you know pretty well trained and just from your time on the road, you know, doing your own stitches and stuff like that. Sixteen. Um, 
Per yeah, okay, so you uh, you look her over, Tina, for just kind of like modern aging. You know, is this just simply an affliction of her bones or of her muscles or blood? Um, and you and as you kind of look at her, you know, it's like she doesn't show any, you know, you squeeze her arm and look for like bruising. You know, you start to see if the blood's sitting near the skin, you know, kind of running through the routine of how you would check to see how much time is left for an older person in their life. <laughs> and you can't really, as you look over it, pinpoint what physically might be wrong with her. Um, you know, you, you kind of look at her. David, I would at this point, David, you can make a uh, an arcana check. Um, yeah, can I like see what part of her is closest to death? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. What if she is dying of a broken heart? It could be. And then we'll write a badass song about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't help but mention, you do notice behind you, uh, over by the graveyard, there is one of the Burakan Stone Reavers working on his elaborate dance routine. You know, he has these fantastic calves. The sun yes. shine off of these Ooh. glorious pits and his perfect calves. As he continues working on the dance uh, of your legend, as is so instructed by Divot. Sorry, my roll twenty in a little slow. Oh, no problem. <laughs> All right, so Divot with a 14. You, uh, you're you looking at, at her and there's, it's not necessarily can you determine what part of her is closest to death, um, but you do remember in your psychedelic battle that you had with her, she had a commence mastery of spirits, you know, and even in her magic, these, these, these twisted spiritual energies uh, seem to be her power source, you know? And so you, Divot, having just come from literally the throne of death, um, you know, you kind of remember how as you walked the steps, you saw all those wild souls in death, death's domain just kind of running amok, um, not under the orderly control of the, you know, the death domain uh, that you had normally seen before. And so as you're kind of looking around, you don't feel the spirits. Not feeling it. You know, you recall even the dancer mentioning to you that like perhaps this dance could help them connect back to the spirits. You know, you're kind of remembering that he said that to you and you're looking at her and you're looking around, you know, you, you had a respect for her command of, of not necessarily death, but this that, that in-between place between life and death is where she draws her power. And you could feel it bubbling off of her skin when you saw her last. Right now, Divot, as you look down on her, this is a little more than an old woman. The, the, the magic within her seems to be strangely absent. Is this because I got the rocket? Oh no, dear, do not blame yourself. Oh, the spirits. I'm not giving it back, I just, I just want to know if it is. <laughs> the spirits grow angry. They do not answer my call. Oh, and you see her kind of like oh, writhe in a little bit of pain to her physical form as she tries to connect to her power source once more, but seems unable, you know, kind what? of. Are they angry? I do not know. Yeah, I would do all I could to appease them. I have slaughtered sacrifices. I have looked into the old prayers, but my skin remains cold and my power remains kept from me. You see a little tear kind of wells in her eyes. She realizes the restrictions of what she is now compared to what she was. She looks at all of you. What, what tidings bring you of the world? Have you saved the day? She kind of looks at you all. Well, um, it's, the, it's complicated. It's on the list. We're getting it's, to it. Yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's still day. Yeah, it's like one big day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, gnomes weren't built in a day. So. Mm -hmm. I understand. Ah, your destinies are weaved. Though I cannot hear them, I remember their touch. Worry not for Ubre. But the spirits, why are they so sad? Why don't they reach to me? You see, she's just kind of like her, you know, her old hair. She kind of stresses her body, trying to connect to that great flow. Champion, she looks at you, Thorcus. Is the rocker angry with me? Well, gosh, I don't know. Um, 
is I, I don't I don't really know how to how to channel that very well unless I get fucking pissed. Is there I, like I middle message him. <clears throat> Say no. <laughs> Say no, bro. <laughs> She's dying. Just say no, bro. Well, I just, I, I, maybe there's like a better way to do it so I don't have to get like angry. <laughs> maybe you can tell me that before you go. I mean, that, that would help all, all of us out, really. You see, but, she's like, come, come, chosen one. Let me look at you. All right. Well, no, I just, like, as Drew, I just want to ask you. <laughs> What? God, give me a sec, okay? I'm trying I'm to sorry, explain. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> no fucks, 40. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> stop being hilarious. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to explain. Like, my, my reasoning for, for kind of being so cold, but it was just to le- legitimately find out if there's a better way to do it because my next suggestion was going to be is there some way that I could, you know, channel it and then like recharge the batteries in her or something like pass it on and kind of like how Tina connects with Shantia. I know it's not the same because the rock is not a deity necessarily, but it's like a sub deity or fantastic creature of some sort right and yeah and you're not like a cleric either you know so it's like your relationship again you've you've kind of it's like this strange you know pseudo like a like a lesser deity has uh, has granted you it's it's boon um well, papa just got some charisma on that last yeah. level up and i'm feeling saucy baby that's true that's true um can i give him some guidance on on this thing that i see him like thinking about yeah totally you know as you kind of plug into his that? mind um, I mean, you can, like I said, guidance is one of those, like, it's the most spammable spell in Dungeons and Dragons. It's like, you should kind of have a guidance up on somebody at any time. So n- never feel bad about throwing a guidance in, Gus. That's the nature of the spell. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. You can, you can choose to give him guidance. Um, that is your concentration right now. Um, so Thoricus, you know, you feel as, you know, as, as the communique between you and Divid in your mind, you know, you, you feel him kind of offering you some of the the magical power that he grants you to call upon in this moment. So I, I want to check. So Thorcus, you, again, you're not a cleric. You don't understand necessarily the nature of this gift. But if you're saying you would like to, like, gift her the power granted you by the Raka, we could play that. Or oh, are you, yeah. I just want to know, are you trying to use it more like, you know, like, clear and give her a boost of the rocket and see if that connects her. I just want to clarify what you're trying to accomplish. I don't know. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, <laughs> I think that because, makes a lot of sense. Like, I'm looking at her and, and like, I, I understand that something's wrong and perhaps the gift of the rocket could unite with Shantia's energy and bring her back. Yeah. Again, I, I was not trying to, like, I was pretty honest about that. It's like, Oh no, I'm not giving it back. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a piece. Or no, like, I have. Hey. All right, so Tina, so, you have a new ability as well. If you want to try using it here, this might be a, a time to do so. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're speaking of I forget the name of it, but it's really I can like Shantia <laughs> divine intervention. Yes. Oh so I, I, again, yeah. I'm not saying you you have to use that, but you were just mentioning like trying to weave Shantia's no, no, magic into this. No, no, that's a great this. idea. A great idea. I I recognize not the urgency, but I recognize her fading power, and in this moment, I want to uh, call upon Shantia, especially if there's going to be some Raka energy in the mix. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. So I'm liking this. So, and um, Bruno and Rial, you guys have the same kind of opera. You know, you guys kind of see a moment here happening. You know, it, it appears that, you know, you see Tina kind of fade out and start channeling that energy of Shantia. You know, you feel this kind of vacuum of energy within her that you haven't felt before. Like there's this, this great receptacle, re- receptacle of magic waiting to be filled. Tina, that'll re- require your role. But I kind of want to take what you guys all try to do and we'll we'll turn it into a series of, of, of events. So... Um, okay. But yes, Thoricus, let's say that that, you know, it's like you're, you don't want to give away the power of the rock. It's something that's very important to you, that ability to be the chosen. Uh, but seeing if you can tap into that uh, to benefit 
Ubre in her condition and see if you can help kind of give a jump start to that connection to her spiritual energy. Divot kind of providing guidance and that overwhelming, you know, that, that connection he has to the plane of death uh, where her wandering spirits may be stuck, you know, to, for lack of a better term. Um, so, yes, uh, what about you guys? Anybody else want to throw in on that in any way? Yeah. It's all yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm kind of like zoning out, almost like Brunor's trance, and I, I'm calling to Shantia, and I'm asking her to shine her blessing once more. I know it's a big ask, and I'm very humble at her feet, but just to extend some of her wisdom and her love into Ubre. Awesome, you know, and, and Tina, you do. We, I mean, we've mentioned now there's a, there is a divine connection to this place, this Church of Shantia, not just a church, but a church in your image. Um, I'm not gonna make it game breaking, but I'm gonna give you a little extra luck on your divine intervention okay. check. Remember, we don't have to roll it yet, but it will be a 1d100 roll. Normally you have to get uh, less than 10 or less. In this case, I'm gonna give you a little 5% because you are biting, standing directly near the Church of Shantia. Um, you're having this swell. You just, you know, like I said, there's a big level up moment. This is kind of the first time you're attempting to use this gift. So I like that. Uh, we'll flavor yeah. it with an extra 5% chance. Um, so yeah, so that's Tina, um, you know, Thoricus. Uh, in this case, I would say to do this either way, you might have to burn the charge. You know what I mean? Like the, um, the actual like rage ability that day, you might have to burn that, um, depending on the role. You know, if you roll really high in, in, in how this plays out, um, probably not. But I just, I didn't want to do anything where you're not aware of a potential risk. Um, and so, yeah, in this case, Thoricus, uh, it, you know, the main D20 check will be on your arms. Uh, but we'll we'll do a divine intervention roll for Tina as well, which will all kind of factor in. Cool. Can I do something that might help the whole situation roll Absolutely, along? Absolutely, Like, please, grease please. the gears a little bit? Mm -hmm. So I do notice that, um, especially after stepping into the church for the first time, I see kind of Tina is in that that state, something I've never really seen before. So I'm going to grab one hand and kind of gesture to Brunor to grab the other. So we both each take a hand and move her over towards like Ubre's bed. And with my free hand, I'll take hers. And if I can use like, man, like one ten thousandth of create bonfire just to warm my hand enough while she's holding it. Maybe one one millionth, I don't even know. But, <laughs> but just enough to... <laughs> Real, don't so accidentally burn this just, woman alive. Just <laughs> you can't do that. She's too Ooh. old. You're right by the just church. Look at her. She's, she, she's just old. <laughs> okay, I like this. But I just want her to feel like a warm grasp if she is gonna go, like at least she's got that. And I want to tell her, like, your prophecy has changed us for the better. Thank you for your kindness, your guidance, and your callousness. Yeah, you know, you her feel her calloused hands. <laughs> you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's almost a reminder, Rial. It's like, she's not Ubre the calloused because she's a callous person. Like, she's actually rather lovely as far as, you know, old women go. Um, but uh, and she's always down to party. You know, that Jubu juice uh, was hers. Um, but, uh, but it's actually her hands are just like covered in calluses from a life, you know, of, of, of hard work. And so, you know, you grab kind of the, the dry skin of, of her hands and hold it in your hands, you know, trying to bring some warmth uh, to this woman in the moment. I like this. Divot, you got any, uh, or Bruno, you got any spice to, to, to splash in? Yeah, I definitely like to wish Ubre a happy 40th birthday. <laughs> oh, man. Drew, you take at least half if you didn't pass that saving throw. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> She's got to be like oh, 42 or 43. You're so... Oh. So old. I mean, you have so to. <laughs> I'm um, old too, guys. Don't worry. I'm, I'm picking so up. So Bruno right. was actually like backing out of the room, and then, and then just caught eyes with Real just in the nick of time and be like, "No, I was just back stepping for a moment. All yep, I'm helping." Like, I just, <laughs> you just start like fluffing a pillow. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, this is um, well. It's funny because I'm standing. I stand on the other side of uh, of. The of her, and I'm like, ew, 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 ew. And I grab her hand, I'm like, nope, ew, ew, ew. And I grab her hand. Oh, woman <laughs> hand. Oh. 
Yeah, you feel her papery thin skin and you know creased fingers. It's like it's like her. It's like she's pruny, like she's been in a spa for days. But you know her body is is just moist from sweat and and just you know just just being old, just worn out. Um, So you know, Bruno, you kind of connect hands. All right, guys, I dig this. Um, Here's how we're gonna do this. There will be three divine intervention checks right now. One will be by Tina Smooth Hands with a 15%. Tina, you're reaching out to Shantia. Thoricus, with a 10% chance, you'll be reaching out to the Raka. Okay? Divot, with a 10% chance, you will be reaching out to Death. All right, so that's how this whole thing factors out. That's all the stuff factoring in um, to, to increase in this moment. Do not worry, there is still a d20 roll for you, Thoricus. If none of the gods intervene, we will have we will have your check, uh, but let's start with with the gods first. I say so. You will be rolling a one d one hundred, which if you haven't done yet, uh, you can do in the dice roller on uh, on roll twenty by clicking the die and scrolling down to d one hundred. All right, Thoracus. Hit it twice. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh. Tina! Nice. Divot! Oh, nice. Nice, Divot. <laughs> hey! Hey! Counts, right? 69. Oh. Nice. nice. Okay. First off, nice. Also, Rial, <laughs> how many hit points you got, bro? Uh-oh. Pretty nice amount. Nice. 69. 69. All right. Nice. Nice. Uh, no, but uh, Divot, nice. also, go ahead and give... Oh, you did. Okay. So you didn't even need it, Tina. You didn't need my 5% boon. Um, mm-hmm. But here it is. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. Um, <laughs> Thoricus, with your, with your hot new charisma, I'm going to need you to make a charisma uh, check with advantage. Literally, charisma is often defined as the force of your will. And in this moment, Thoricus, you're literally trying to force your will into Ubre. Dang. With a 12. Okay. <laughs> Does that... All yeah. right, Thoricus. So you, you know, you uh, you kind of settle down in front of her. You know, you kneel down on your on one knee and kind of look this old, withered woman in the eye. You know, as you, you kind of... the bonus from my guidance. Say, right? You do, you add yeah, a decent... Yeah, the guidance. Uh, uh, what is it? A superior, yeah, a superiority die. Wow. Superiority. <laughs> uh, no, superiority die. Uh, for commanding presence? For commanding presence, that's right. And you have uh, guidance. Div- d- guidance adds a d4, is that correct? Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. I mean, how much more do I really need to make this happen? Hey, that's actually pretty dope, though. Yeah, so yeah, go ahead and roll me your, uh, your, your superiority dies, which are what now, d10s, right? Uh, they are D10. Dope. <laughs> Battlemasters are cool. Tasty. Fuck off. All right, so you're at uh, 16, and then you're going to add a D4 uh, for your guidance. Get it. Get it. Get awesome. It. Get it. No whammies. Yeah. A two. All right. A two. Let me guess. It's a 19. What's that? Let me guess it's a 19. <laughs> DC was 19, <laughs> Thoricus. You die. Uh, no. There it is. You take 105 damage. No! <laughs> I said I was coming for you. No. All right, dudes. I already heard that one today, you unoriginal bastard. <laughs> All right, Thoricus, you kind of kneel down. You know, you guys feel kind of the somber mood inside of this. You know, the that feeling of of uh, of the end of a journey. You know, you've, you've all in your in your tales have seen dead people along the way, and very few of you have gotten to watch the natural letting go of a body. You know, that it's like typically they die because like somebody killed them, or disease, or famine, or you know, very few people uh, get the luxury of living to old age. And so you watch as this forty-one-year-old woman. Uh, no, I'm just no, she, she, so much. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Um, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna lose two inches off my hairline for that joke. 
<laughs> you know, you guys, as this as this kind of hanging smoke lingers in the air, and you look around at the you know hanging small skulls of little creatures and teeth and fangs. You know, the Burakan culture uh, very respectful of the animals by which they live off of animals, which, as you all know, are fewer and fewer to find in the world. You know, and so you watch as the kind of the natural state of the things around her, the smoke that just kind of lingers heavy and thick, moist with sweat, uh, as you all stand in the room. You notice that that kind of swirl start happening as the smoke kind of starts to dance around you guys. Thoricus, you know, you kneel down and you can't help but remember the spinning cyclone of fire uh, the first time that you, you know, really connected with the Raka in the battle, actually in the real town of Raka, you know, burning the bridge away beneath you. You feel that same kind of cyclone kind of channeling around you. Those of you on the outsides of the room, even you hold, uh, you know, Bruno as you hold to the hand and Rial as you hold the other hand, uh, you guys kind of on the outside of this, you know, the, the outer region of the tent are, you know, where the whirling smoke kind of starts picking up speed around you. Thoricus, to you, you know, it's just, it's finally cleared and it's like you're in the eye of this hurricane. You know, you start channeling that that call to the rock of that cry of this, of the firebird uh, that you've accessed before without without losing yourself to the, the rage that uh, that connects to it. You know, you start, you feel yourself, you know, almost like a, uh, a, a, a religious person, you're sending a prayer out to, a, to, to this deity that you don't necessarily fully understand yet. You know, and so you just open that, that pocket within yourself, similar to the way the Tin of Smooth Hands did, and you open and wait for that call. You know, you feel that burning fire of the Firebird well within you. You are the Chosen of the Raka, and that energy just starts to kind of burn in front of you as you see an actual orb of fire start summoning in front of you. You know, you're waiting for the firebirds to kind of reach out of it, the wings of the bird that you've seen so many times. And it doesn't. You see this burning, glowing orb as Tina, you nearby, feel that surge and rush of the river of Shantia's might. And like standing at the base of a waterfall, you feel the full strength of the green lady enter your body. You know, you feel the surge of power cosmic, the divine, you know, more stronger than any adventurer can be, these, these gods that exist in their own domains and realms. But for a moment, Tina, you feel the pure connection of the warm light of the lady. You know, you your eyes kind of open and you can see her, you know, the, the, the face of her, you know, looking down on you, the flowers that, that bend around her hair and her faint green skin as she looks down upon you for the first time you make eye contact with your god. You feel that power surge into you. Tina, what do you do in this moment as you look I, into the divine eyes of, of the green lady? I'm hit like a ton of bricks in this moment. I like the wind is knocked out of me and I, I fall to my knees in supplication. You fall to the ground. You know, you feel the power of that waterfall drives you to the earth. And you all can actually see Tina. It looks like her shoulders are bearing a great weight above her. But you see, she opens her eyes and looks forward. And you see this divine, pure yellow light just shooting out of her eye sockets in all directions. You see it starts mixing with the smoke as it weaves around you, starts threading itself into the weaves and, and cords of smoke as this kind of like slimy vine, this golden, beautiful light starts spitting around the outside of you guys. You see as that ball of fire tenna starts glowing more and more yellow and golden. <laughs> the flickering flames, the chaos of the power of fire no longer, but the curved and control ed edges of the, the power of divine life. <laughs> All five of you in a moment see this orb <laughs> turn into the face of Martha Gautschein. You see her, you know, just kind features and withered face, her piercing green eyes. She doesn't connect to any of you, but stares only at the withered frame of Ubre the Callist. You see as the floating dismembered head of, of Martha Gashire starts floating closer and closer to her, you suddenly see her kind hand start reaching out from the orb. Do not worry, dear. It is not quite your time. And you see with her thumb, she wipes away all of the age from the face of Ubre the Calist. 
you see the wrinkles, you know, a hundred years or so, deeply set in as the smear of Martha's finger, the, the, the divine glowing light of yellow energy, wipes away on her face. You see all of the age go with it. And then in a moment, she reaches both hands out. And you see her just caress the body of Ubre the Calloused. And as you see the warm white and yellow light cover her body, it is like it bakes away the age from her withered form. And you watch as Ubre the Calloused transforms into a woman no older than 30. You are now looking at the original Ubre. Ubre the Creaseless. You see her withered black hair is now long, stringy, black and thick instead of gray and withered. You see she's actually in quite good shape, like she was a hunter of her own. You see the muscles of youth return to her body, the color to her skin. She sits up. She looks, the face of Martha dissolves away. The spinning chaos of the magic calms down. And you see the youthful face of Ubre the Creaseless looking you all in the eyes. The mother was not finished with you yet. The lady! Oh, and she reaches forward, Tina, and just wraps you in her arms. And you just feel that benevolence, that, you know, the, 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 that saintly love that she feels as if she felt that, that grace of the God, that same feeling you felt as it bathed her body in magic. She clings to you tight. The mother, she is good. She is strong. Oh. And she sees, she just starts looking at her hands like she can't believe what's happened. Well, I also can't believe what has happened. Did that really just fucking happen? <laughs> yeah. Even I can't believe what worked? happened. Guys, Martha? Who was is that, that Martha? lady? <laughs> yeah, Tiffany, you're like, who? <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, you guys, you know, Rial had mentioned that uh, that Martha had, had spoken to him in his dream state, but that would be the first time that uh, any of you have seen her face since her death in the Temple of Eras Duel. That was incredible. Way to go, Tina. Your first divine intervention totally worked. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it worked. I can't believe wow. it. Wow. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm riding off that Shantia high right now. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's yeah. not, you, you know, that connection is gone, Tina, but, you know, rather than, you know, like when you would channel the strength of Thera's Dune, there's not that craving to reconnect. It's like she filled you to 110% and she left you that way as she went, you know, away from you in this moment. But you, you know, you had a moment that only the highest priests, you know, can swear to attest yeah. to. But you, Tina Smoothance, have seen the face of Shantia. And it's stunning. And, and you were saying like, uh, I feel a certain way now. I feel like I just had the best meal of my life and I'm just like completely satisfied in every way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, you know, again, you're, you're, and Tina is positively glowing, like quite in a literal sense, like that, that glowing benevolence that beams off of her, you know, in the eyes of all, of all that seem to meet her. You know, even you guys can't help but be like, dang girl, turn that down a little bit. It's, it's kind of bright in here. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, uh, the, the, the Ubre the Creaseless, uh, sits before you still kind of at a shock. Um, now you do notice, Divot, it doesn't seem that like she had, that this has given her necessarily her connection to magic back. Um, right. but she is, she I, is, she is young again. Looking at her, I'm like, and how, how different she looks. I, I want some of that. What? <laughs> yeah, you're like my own sister doesn't use that to to hook me up. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Every once in a while, okay, just every once Bro, in a we while. We had no <laughs> idea that was gonna work. Like, I'm over here all bone arms. I don't. You, I'll I'll talk to the mother. I'll see if she can. You chose that. It. No, I like it. I like it. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> Are you just joshing? Gotta make up for decades of lost joshing time. <laughs> you know about joshing? Let me teach you about joshing. Let me try Josh and Uber. <laughs> You're like, welcome back. Here's a sweet Josh. Yeah. Here's a little bit of Josh. Yeah, you gotta roll for joshing if you're trying to institute a state of Josh. 
I definitely just like a d20. Well, what do we yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Give me a d20 with advantage because you're 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 high on that uh, that Shanti you love. <gasps> oh wait, yeah, yeah, three. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need it. Um, I can re-roll though. Yeah, right? you have the advantage from uh, from Shanti. You just talk to your god. I uh, I think that your uh, your capacity for joshing may be higher, but hey, if you roll poorly, yeah. it is still kind of a weird room right now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you said I can roll again? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, you had okay. advantage. Boop. All right, not your finest, Josh. But again, you're, you know, you're, you don't want to break her. You know, this was an old woman. You know, you don't want to Josh too hard, Tina. No, no, no. I mean, I was, I was just feeling how fragile she was earlier, and I do have faith in Shantia, but you know, I, I just don't want on the first go around. I don't want to give her the whole thing. Yeah, it's a gentle joshing for sure. <laughs> gentle joshing, yes. Yeah. So you guys have like a um, like a library Josh. You know what I mean? Where you guys are like joshing around, but it's like, shh, 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 maybe, she, maybe she's falling asleep. Shh. Uh, no, she's she's there, but yeah, she you know she's uh she's still she's kind of flabbergasted by what just happened. If I'm being honest, uh, you know she she keeps looking at you, Tin, and then looking at her hands and like touching her face. And you see her feeling like the rich volume of her hair, and it's you know it's this is as some you know a couple of you guys had an aging curse on you at one point. It did it did feel back to get uh, feel good to get back into your old skin, um, but you can see it's like it's almost a little too much for her to take in right now. She you know being nearly on death's door is now apparently given life anew. Ubre, um, how do you feel about your magic? You see, she looks at you, and you know where her eyes, if you recall, they were yellow like a wolf's. You know, they had that kind of, uh, they, that, that like sharp yellow color to them. They're like piercingly so now, almost like a sunflower. You know, and so you see these bright yellow eyes in this like kind of thick, fierce, wily black hair. And she looks at you, and you, and you know, it's like she almost like hadn't even considered it. She's been so caught up in her physical form. You see she kind of starts looking around the room and scr she scratches into a box and p pulls out a couple bones, moves over to her little metal tray, you know, starts a fire up. You can see she's, you know, she starts sweating from her forehead as she ferociously tries to go about performing one of her rituals. She throws the bones in the tin. You see her breathe in. So wait, before you freak out, hold on one second. I think something is going on between like the Feywild, like the there's realms, there's something wrong with the realms crossing over. And I think that's something that you didn't know until just now and I thought I should tell you. She, she looks at you like, you know, she's still as wise as an old woman, but yet she's still in this, in this young body. She, she kind of picks up what you're saying pretty quickly. Ah, the, the rules, they could have changed. The rules, yes, the rules. Ah, yes, hold on, yes, perhaps. And you see, she starts just drawing out this little picture out of like juices and paints this, as she scrawls on the ground in front of her, this ritualistic magic that she kind of, you know, uses. And you see, she starts, you know, one of the little runes that she's drawn on the ground starts glowing. That's new. They are trapped. My spirits are trapped. And then she kind of looks up at you, Dibbit. And then she holds the rune. And you see she starts moving it closer to you, and the closer it gets to you, the brighter it gets. You see her, her yellow eyes start glowing with magic as she kind of like moves closer and closer to you. You know, the blue rune now, like, brightly glowing in her hand as she as she attempts to try to put it on you, Dibbit. Do you want to let her or no? Uh, yeah, I'll take it from her. I like you, Bray. Give, give me the stone. Boom, you know, she kind of, yeah, like Iron Man sets it like right in your chest. And Divot, you feel the kind of burning blue energy of this rune searing in your chest. You, in your mind, kind of go back again to that, that void of death's domain. You know, you're not standing on the cone stole steps, but just kind of floating in the mist. You look around, and as these wisps, these strange energies that were kind of all chaotic and running around you kind of start coming to life, you realize what is happening. Death is no longer taking spirits to the other side. The balance of death itself, Divid, as you look around, is laid out in chaos. 
as spirits now forming their actual features. You see humanoids, monsters alike, as thousands, hundreds of thousands of souls stretch on in all directions, through multiple dimensions, through different aspects of time. Divid, you're standing there and you realize all these spirits are lost. They can't connect to Ubre right now because death is not doing his job. You feel the burning energy kind of bring you back into the tent. The rune breaks and falls to the ground. She's looking in the eyes. What happened? What did you see? Death's on holiday. You see, she looks at you confused. That cannot be. The rules. The rules are written. You see, she starts kind of looking around at all the magic around her, but she's just as confused as any of you are at this. She sees she's kind of like, she wishes she could offer you more in this moment, but she seems to be perplexed. The only magic that she seemed able to draw to was this strange rune which connected to Divot. What about some drums? If, if we got you some drums, would that, would that help? I know you used to like to do that. <laughs> The shaman asked outside, you know, certainly could be called upon to do some drums, kind of bring out the ritual aspect. You do see the going-ons, this giant, you know, benevolent light that pierced through the tent has drawn the, the attention of all the kind of nearby Burakans. And uh, Thorcus on that cue, you kind of see, you know, the shaman just start start playing their drum. And you see, like, taking the cue from you, you see they all kind of start their, you know, getting lost in that dance that they do, that ritualistic dance. You know, you kind of hear the bones and the shaking staffs and the, the rain sticks as the drum beat kind of comes in. You see Ubre looks around like, of course, like what a foolish person was I not to seek the ritual power of my people. You know, and as Thoricus, as you kind of start yielding in, that fire of the rock it starts connecting. You, you know, you can all kind of feel that presence of the firebird within you. You see she takes the hint. She starts dancing as well. They all kind of zone out. Uh, into that ritualistic dance state. And as they do, Divot, you can start hearing the cries of these spirits from the plane of death as as they as, as if you were in the room with them, as if they, they were just outside of your reach. And Divot, you, you notice, you know, as you start hearing these voices, looking around to see if anybody else notices them, they do not. You start hearing more and more of these, help me, take me, help me. You just start hearing these voices withering all around you. You see several blue lights. What do you do? Uh, um, all right, I'll re I reach out and grab one to try to see if I can pull it into this plane to help Ubre out or something. David, you reach out to grab, you know, one of these like blue energy sources and your skeletal fingers kind of touch and you feel that beating heartbeat power of the acorns within you, you know, this, this seed of death strength that allows you to reach beyond the realm and you feel your hand touch the, touch the cold withering frame of a soul. You peel it through the fabric of the layers and you see it start floating around the room, dancing the way that all of the Barakans nearby do. You see Ubre breathes a bunch of the smoke into her and you see one of the spirits go into her. Her eyes glow blue with magic. It appears, Divot, that you have reconnected Ubre, the, the creaseless, with her spiritual energy source. You see the blue lights all around you wither away as you kind of go to reach for others. This connection, the power of the magical dance all around you kind of overtakes even you, Divot, as you guys all kind of writhe to this ritual dance going on around you. You know, those of you not partaking are just kind of like, the whole mood in this room has totally shifted pretty quickly. Uh, and, and, and you watch as everybody kind of trances out in that boob rock and, uh, uh, you know, uh, euphoric kind of dance ritual that they, that they do. Um, what do you guys want to do? You see, you know, Ubre's eyes kind of glowing blue again. The spirits speak to me months once more. What have you? Have you a question for them? You know, she's looking at you again. Basically, she has connection to that uh, that kind of foresight that she gifted you before. Uh, do you guys have any any questions for her? How are you feeling? I have never felt better. 
Then you see she's just kind of looking around at this coursing magic in her skin. In her skin. You can see, you know, her, she's very muscular. So like kind of the vascular muscles or the veins themselves seem to be pulsing with this spirit energy. <laughs> And the, and the, you know, the energy in the room keeps building as everybody else trances around her. Yeah, you look, you look good. Uh, like, way better. And I'm, like, you're feeling better. Um, cool. So, do I, I guess... Do spirits say what we should do about the, the bounty that's on my head and the guys that we're about to fight right after this? <laughs> You see her eyes roll back like they have before. She takes a deep breath in as the essence of you, Brunor. You kind of feel breathe into her for more, uh, for a moment as she exhales it back into you. <sighs> the queen, wife of the dragon lord. She pulls the strings, but many players in play. The Tron towns, so many spirits. So many souls sent to the other side. Fear them. They are vastly powerful. You see, she's just kind of like surging in this magical power source once more that she has long since been connected to. She's just kind of writhing, as you've seen, you know, like a scry in, uh, in the 300, just kind of writhing in the power of it all as her hair kind of begins to stand on end. The spiritual energy is so high in this room right now. It's palpable to you guys. You feel the spiritual energy, that kind of mixed spirit of the firebird and the power of the other place kind of fusing in one location. Dim it, your fingertips are kind of tingly. You know, there's, there's magic, massive magical power in this room right now. But that's that is her answer to you, Bruno. Cool, 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 dope, 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 great, great, no, it's great. Right. Nobody else, nobody else has anything they want to ask this lady. This lady dropped the truth bomb. She dropped the biggest truth bomb on me, first and foremost, so. Let's revisit that one. My previous prophecy is like, sure she remembers now that everything's kind of wearing off. I've met Synthesis now. I understand where we, where we all stand in this crazy chessboard. So I want to see if she's got anything from the spirit she's pulling. How do I stop him? All right, you see, you know, this surge again, this power, it's its starting to, you're starting to see like it's a little, its it might be too much power for her. You know, she's used to calling on upon the spiritual energy as an old withered woman. Um, her youthful energy, her strength, her inner will is so, so much stronger in her current state that she might be over juicing a little much in this moment. You see, she starts, as she, as she starts thinking about synthesis, she breathes you in once more. You know, if you recall, Rial, this, the, the, this magic and hers have had some kind of like bad interactions before it kind of blew away her dish the last time you see she's so far beyond the summoning pot at this point she seems to be pulling prophecy from the air around her you see she writhes for a moment and she looks you directly in the eyes you see the blue peels away and now just the piercing yellow wolf eyes of young Ubre the creaseless and she looks directly at you the ice queen the ice queen is your only answer. That's what I've been saying. You did say that. <laughs> you did. I'll back that up. And again, you forgot to turn this thing off. I've told you so many times to turn this thing off. I'm standing right here. It's fine. You're literally right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you see as she's, you know, again, the strain of pulling that last bit of prophecy out of her, you see finally her body, oh, she drops, you know, you hear even the drummers kind of stop as to not, you know, push the issue too much. She's not dead or anything, but she's kind of like on her hands and knees, breathing heavily, sweating very heavily. I have but one spirit to talk to. Divot, if you can bring me more, perhaps I can aid you further. She kind of sets down. I have forgotten what youth feels like. Bless you, Tina. Bless your lady. Bless the Raka. 
and she looks at her hands and kind of withdraws into herself a little bit as she sits down. You know, you see all the uh, all the nearby Burakans kind of <sighs> let go of that sigh of relief of this highly religious moment for them and kind of give, you know, yield you guys the moment, you know, this this ritual has passed. Each of you sapped, you know, the energy drawn from this kind of moment, to even your own strength from that, you know, deep connection with Shantia. You feel the kind of the, that pocket of magic energy, kind of the bubble pops. And you all are kind of sitting, each of you kind of fatigued just from the going ons of this last few minutes. You see, she looks at you all. The drowned hounds, they control many souls. Perhaps break their control, and we can benefit from that. I fear for our city, for our people, but I will have my power back. Yeah. And she, you know, kind of stands herself up, and I will make sure that the city of Emerella does not fall. You see the kind of writhing soul energies around her hand. And she's tapping into this power source once more. You know, you guys see kind of a, a match of energy within her as she is, you know, an equal power of her own right. You see, she looks up kind of past you and you see Toko just standing there, you know, even though he just has the slits of his big leather pads, you know, slit over little tufts of his, his red bugbear hair. But you see his eyes just wide. She is reborn. The Raka is good. You see, he kind of kneels down and begins praying to the god of his own, you know, not even really be able to believe, again, the cosmic high magic that he's, <laughs> that he's laid witness to. Yeah, didn't I tell you there'd be dope shit? I was like, Toko, you're gonna be my general, and there's gonna be some dope shit happening. You have to look. What, what did Papa bring you? Check the receipt. <laughs> I passed Toko a, a big cigar that he didn't even notice I was smoking. <laughs> this is how we roll, baby. Like, just hang with us. You see, he stands up, you know, and he kind of pulls the, the you know, the mask of, of leather that always kind of covers the most of him, and he, you know, kind of pulls the, the mask down and shows you, you know, he's got the big underbite of, you know, kind of known for the bugbear people. The long arms, you know, his arms hang, you know, almost as long down to his knees. And, uh, you know, the bugbear's known for, like, these, like, extremely long reach that they have. But he looks at you, Thoricus, you know, and he's, he's like, it is, it is a great honor to see you work. I seek to teach them your ways. You see, he reaches behind him, and he pulls out the, you know, the tome of, of, the, of the stone reavers. He always has it with him. He says, this is my bedfellow each night, and my friend in the morning. Tell me, Thoricus, what do you, what should we change? What should we do? My men, they grow hungry for battle. We seek to fight in the name of the Raka, but we do not know where. Tell us, champion, what do the Burakan Stone Reavers do with their might? Gosh, that's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> well, I want to make sure that Emeril is taken care of. But, you know, there's, there's so many other things going on. There's so many <laughs> other things that we can worry about. That's true, you know, and it's like, basically, you can, you can, I don't want to make it seem like you can't have them do what they've been doing, which is guard patrols, kind of keeping this area around here safe. But I will, like, that's kind of, he's just trying to get across to you that they, the people that, you know, they have a hard time with that. Like, they, they are people of combat, you know, that, that the Raka calls to the, each one of them. And so it's like they're, with, with there not being, you know, much for them to do, they, they are asking if there's somewhere that the thing they do best could be put to use, you know? And so that's that's basically what he's asking you right now. And there are quite a few options um, that, that could go. But again, I just didn't, I didn't want to make it seem like he's not, he's unwilling uh, to stay and continue kind of business as usual. Um, but they are, you know, it's a, this is kind of a, to, to step into the D&D lens a little bit here. This is kind of like the, you guys are starting to have an effect on the world. You know, it's like you're reaching that realm now. Like people are hearing about your exploits all around the world. And you have these little pockets of power. Um, and this is one of them. The Burak and Stone Reavers uh, is a small force, you know, probably 80 in number when it's all calculated, when they're all drawn into the same location. Uh, but they are, it is a force that you guys have that you can, you know, use to do things where you're not. 
um, or uh, or you know back up certain people. Like you said, protecting the town, to, you know, is another one of those options. I just wanted, you know, as you guys kind of grow in level, so now will your options. You'll have kind of some more of these balances to deal with uh, as, as what you want to do with the people that kind of pay homage to you. Um, Tina, your numbers are starting to grow as far as the Church of Shantia. Really? You know, you have kind of done this a little bit with Sorella in the sense that you have now told her to finish the book and then start. So your people, let's say right now, you probably have five that, that work in your church that are ready to go spread yeah. the word of Shantia. They're going to go in all directions with this book of Shantia. Uh, and that's kind of where your world influence is going right now, you know. And then Thoricus, you have, you are in control of, you know, you. They, and again, it's like Toko's men, but it's like you, they look to you for guidance, you know. You don't even have to make this answer for them. You could put that burden on Toko as he is the leader of these units, you know, and can so. He, I was going to say, can he just take, like, his best platoon or something like that? Like, just a small, like, maybe group of 30 soldiers yes with him uh to go do something well you know i guess the majority of the, the stone reavers just stay here and help and follow ubre's orders i'd like to make a small request t Thoricus. yeah <clears throat> i'm thinking back to that that dancer with the fabulous calves who was also a soldier okay. and i'm wondering I if a, if an elite group of maybe three or four thespian-minded uh, Boo Rockins could not possibly hit the road and spread the word. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's, I mean, sp spread the Boo. Gather the calves. Um, so yeah, okay. So I'm just, I'm just gonna, so we're saying Toko and 30 dudes, um, his, his, I'm gonna say like the more elite units, um, we'll do one thing. And then, so you want to, uh, is, uh, I mean, that's, this is, this is your call, of course, uh, Thoricus, but yeah, if, if you guys, so it's like Tina, you've got your five acolytes, mm -hmm. um, that are kind of going out into the world right now. Um, and then, uh, and then yes, yeah, so that would leave basically 50, uh, of the, uh, of the Burak and forces left, um, 49, if we include our dancer, uh, if we wanted to call it a clean 45, we could have 45 remaining and then the, the, the dancers. Yeah. Let's just call it 45. That sounds good. And I, I basically want them spreading the word of, of the way of the Boo Rockins the same way that, like, Shanti as people are. Okay, that. so Get that's... the Jackson 5 traveling band type of way. Okay, yeah. cool. So, Divid, in that sense, um, since they will be like, uh, do you want them to be, a, uh, if they're a group, which direction would you want them to go? I like this kind of stuff, guys, because this will all start factoring into yeah. like how you interact with the world around you. So this is this is kind of cool. I'll be able to punch this in and do some fun back stuff with this. And then you'll see it in the world around you. This is, uh, I love this uh, point in D&D. Yay. So, um, so yeah, we're, Divin. We're, we're talk talking about dealing with some stuff to the south, so maybe send them to the north. Okay, yeah, so up toward Nambaldir, or do you want them to uh, split off and go kind of, here, I can bring up the, uh, the world map. Um, That'll probably help everybody. Um, oh, so yeah. yes, you uh, you know where you are right now. You could send in north. They would basically go past the fork where you know Boxo last you saw him um, is up toward Nambul Deer, uh, or they could go off toward Radella as well. They they you know any of those places. Um, I know you guys had mentioned going to Nambul Deer soon, so Nambul Deer is also you know it's like that. That would be the closest place. H they should head to Nambul Deer by way of Boxo. Okay. To check with him and tell him what's going on with us. I like that. I like okay. that a lot. Yeah, I would, uh, I would say, I mean, at this point, you know, I mean, you guys can legit, like, uh, write whatever you would want Boxo to know. You know, so you could, we could just do the, like, your scroll says dot, 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 and he gets filled in with whatever information. If there's anything you want to keep from him or anything, we can always do that as well. So, you know, it's like, but we can kind of, you guys can send whatever messages with this group to box. Of and perhaps can. some of his horde uh, finds the Raka to be like something they're interested in. Mm, I like that. Or Shantia. I think they're delivering both leaflets and pamphlets today. Yeah. And they get it all twisted, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah we are for the, the life like... of the." <laughs> <laughs> yes, the uh, the acolyte going to Nambul Deer will travel with them, you know. So safety in numbers, of course. Um, but yes, yeah, so that that one will go north. All right. Sorry. All right. So um, we've got. Do we have a name for our dancing group, Divot? 
Oh my goodness. I don't mean to put you on the oh. spot. <laughs> I did. Oh I did. yeah, the booty rockers. Boo rocker. Ooh. <laughs> Did you say the booty rockers? The big bad, yeah. booty, the big bad booty rockers. <laughs> big bad booty rockers. Big bad booty rockers. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. I went big bad Beetleborgs too. Um, the big wow. bad booty rockers. You got it. You got it. <laughs> this is the story we're writing together, my friends. All right. So the big bad booty rockers uh, with one of the uh, Tina's acolytes are headed north to uh, to Numble Deer. Uh, what would you like Toko and his thirty uh, more, you know, his best warriors to be doing, uh, Thoricus? <laughs> I got him. <laughs> no, you're good. You're, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, okay, so Toko and uh, the, the elite, uh, I'd actually like to have them kind of get, maybe with the help of uh, Melora, move through the mountains faster. If, if, can we pass that on to, to them? If, like, Can we give them like a token or something? It's like, oh yeah, now look, we know Thor is. Like, <laughs> These guys too, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you could get him through. Where, where are you? Are you trying to get him through uh, up to like Nobel Deer, or where do you I, want? I them? actually want him to uh, go meet up with Sunder Milton just to see because we haven't heard from him. He's kind of he's kind of like a big opening part to all of this, and yeah, then kind of the middle part, and then we haven't really heard or seen or nothing from him in a long time. And Tanara's uh, there. Who? I don't care. Yeah. Shut up. No. Yeah. <laughs> That has nothing to do with it. This big horde of dudes that are obsessed with you and think you're super cool, send them to talk to her. That's a good idea. <laughs> Bro, I'm not. Oh, no game recognizes game. game. I'm not. Dude. No, you got game. Any one of these guys I'm sending is. Come on. Genius. <laughs> All right, so Thorkiss, um, what you could do with them, because Melora actually wouldn't help them get to Radella too much quicker. I mean, they would get through the, uh, you know, from there to the crossroad pretty immediately. Um, so yeah, I, I just lied to you. They would. Uh, they would get there quicker because they wouldn't have to go around the mountain path to get there. Um, and then they would end up, you can send them to, through the Dryad's Colt uh, to get to Radella or just have them kind of follow the road uh, up around Nambaldir and over to Radella, whichever way you want them to go. They're, they're pretty comfortable say. moving through trees and stuff. Like they're used to hunting. So it's like they can right. cook through the forest, the Dryad's Colt area pretty easily. So why don't we send uh, Toko and the big bed booty rockers or yeah together through the mountain Melora to get to Boxo we'll find out all that shit that's going on there and exchange information and then we'll go separate ways the the big bed booty rockers to Numble Deer I think that's what you said right yeah 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 and then, yeah no that'd be great and then the Toko and their guys are gonna go to uh that one uh Radella cool Perfect. All right, and then uh, and then your forty-five. They're gonna kind of stay as the town guard, road guard in this area. Is that the is that the idea? Uh, yeah, just to make sure that shit doesn't happen to, to this town. We we've done a lot in this town specifically, and there's there's like a lot of cool people here. I don't want to see anything bad happen. So hey, good point. Uh, has got this. So yeah, so that's that's the. Uh, you know, you kind of whittle that down into Toko as, you know, David, you uh, you go to gather and you see, you know, the, 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 the one with the nice calves is already working on his piece. And you can see it's a lot of story for him to carry on his own shoulders. You know, it's it's uh, that's the it's the story of five, uh, you know, adventurers. And so as he tries to, you know, properly capture each one of you in his little scene, um, he's unable to to, to, to to portray the full bounty. And so, Divot, you, you know, eyeing the, the best calves of the group, um, spot another four gentlemen that you think, you know, might uh, might be able to, to pull it off if pulled all together. You know, and so like a... Uh, like a director in the in the twenties, you know, you're kind of you've always got like a cigarette in your mouth, and you kind of gather them all together and uh, inform them of, of your task. You know, you're, you're sent the uh, the big bad booty rockers have uh, have formed, and they will serve uh, as to, to spread the word. Now, you want them to uh, just to be specific. What is the message that you wanted them to send? Now, Tina's acolytes are spreading the the word of the book of Shantia. 
uh, and the Green Lady. What, what is it you want this uh, this this dance troupe? What's the message you want them to be delivering? Oh, they're like a bad dancing musical comedy improv group that yeah. goes around and spreads the good word of the, the lighthearted side of the the rocka, spreading spreading the news of the rocka, the booty rocka, <laughs> the big bad booty rockas. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they will, uh, so it's, uh, so yes, they're going to pass along the word of this new, uh, this new divine source, you know, not a, not, there's not many churches to the rock or anything, it's pretty much, um, it, you know, a, a thing of the Burakan people, but as you guys know, the power of gods is directly linked to those who believe in them, so as Tina, as you spread the power of the word of Shantia, as the word of the Raka spreads, so too will the influence of these deities, according to the rules as written right now. So and these, you know, these people are still warriors too. You yes. know what I mean. So like, they're gonna show uh, the ways to people who have not been exposed to it. Maybe like, uh, like raising awareness of the Raka worldwide. Can I like they know that. Capoeira? Because that'd be fantastic. That's super dope, and I don't see why they wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, there, it's very much like rooted in like, yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, so they're they're basically breakdance fighting their message across the land. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical thing. It touches the dragon. The guy with the calves is basically like Eddie Gordo. Yeah, they're gleaming, you know. And so, yeah, you know, uh, Thoricus, you kind of place your hand on the on the wall of the stone of Malora the Mountain. You know, one of the first times you really called upon this ability, and you feel hey. that energy within. Is you kind of see a pocket of earth opened. You know, it, again, we've kind of made it like fast travel through Malora's Mountain. So it seems you're able to benefit this to them uh, as well and send them through. You basically ask the mountain uh, to Can take them to the crossroads. An ever changing minecart path. Yes. It's like, it's like an Indiana Jones minecart type thing, but it's like ever changing. So. Yeah, so it's like, Wah! and it'll be like, oh, we're going left. And then it turns right, and there's like wacky signs and animatronic people for some reason. <laughs> I'm Melora, Melora the mountain. Um, sorry, I don't know why. I know exactly why I went there. That's no lie. Um, so yeah, uh, so yes, this is possible. So Rial, uh, just so you're aware, they are, uh, it's, it, they're going to send Toko, um, these dancing emissaries and about 30 elite warriors along uh, on this message. Uh, they are sending all, they're updating Boxa with everything that's happened. Um, if you did want to send with them whatever you wanted to give Boxo, uh, you could do that as well. So uh, just so you know, because I know you were AFK for a sec. Yeah, I I owe him. I promised him treasure, man, and I'm an elf of my word. I'm not That's saying that. you have to. I'm just saying it's an option. No, you give him that yeah. scarab. Who is who's got that scarab? The, I think Bruno has the scarab. Does not someone have a scarab? I think Bruno has oh, yeah. the scarab. The crimson scarab. Shut up, <laughs> Shut up, Bruno! Shut up! Shut up. <laughs> I don't even know anything about it. Yep. So, what I'm sending, and I entrust the Burakans with it, especially Toko, because Toko and his crew are going to Broxo first, right? Yes. Before hitting Radella. Correct. They're going through so, the mountain. Malachite's going to, the uh, Malora is going to take them through the mountain and leave them there. Thank goodness there's some strong boys, because here's what's coming in Boxo's way. 120 copper, 2,000 silver, 440 gold, and 28 platinum. How much gold? I'm sorry. Uh, gold is 440. Oof. And, and these are Thoricus's boys, so I know that every coin will make it to its destination. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. But yeah, absolutely. I know. owe the guy. <laughs> I promised them, and maybe if they can at least impart the message that we're going to be heading down south, and if Boxo's got any willing friends to help us out, they know where to find us. Awesome, yes. Okay, let me add that in here as well. Do -do -do. All right, so yeah, you uh, you know, you kind of at first you like walk some of the the big strong Burakan men over to this area, and you're like, you know, I have some money, you know, and they're like, oh yeah, and they grab a couple sacks, and they're like, oh yeah, it's a little heavy. And you're like, no 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 no, the the chest, 
you know, and they, they look down, there's just this <laughs> massive chest. You know, it's like they go to like, just pick it up and it's like, oh, you know, it's got 2000 silver in it. They're just like, ooh, ooh. you see, you know, the, the, those little muscles right there just start oh, tensing up um, as they kind of load this, uh, you know, uh, one of those, uh, what was it, a leader? Uh, where they like shoulder mount this little thing that they put all the, the treasure on. And uh, the band kind of all gets together and they're getting ready. Uh, so that's the plan. They'll go um, to Boxo. They will inform him of the uh, of, of you all going south around the southern rim here, you know, kind of southeast. They all uh, run ahead of such good calves after carrying all of that treasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see the shine of each of the calves of these incredible dancers. In, you in, set such a beautiful scene of them loading up, like the biggest guy taking the 2,000 silver, you know, next strongest gets all the 400 gold, third strongest gets the 120 copper, and then they just have like 28 platinum and a little satchel, and just give it to the, the littlest guy with the weakest facial hair. It's like, like worth the most Aww. money part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you hear Melora, it will be done. And you see that little pocket of earth, you know, uh, uh, offers to take them along. So that's, uh, that that would take care of your guys' like, uh, kind of like world buildy uh, potential power stuff right there. Um, so yeah, you see if they all kind of like, like, a, like an emissary group and all kind of like gather up their things and possessions and begin for their, uh, their great journey north and northwest. Um, you're all, you know, you kind of see the other, the, the 45 that remain kind of going back to their posts, securing the nearby roads. Um, you know, you see one of them kind of walking near the, uh, the west side of the town, you know, where the little river runs by. And he's like, kind of walking by to go resume his post. And you see him, he stops. And he like, looks down into the water. And he like, peers his head over the little stone bridge. And you just see one of those electric blue tentacles. <laughs> reaches up and grabs him around the neck. <coughs> he gets drawn into the water. And that's where we're going to pick it up after intermission, guys. Oh, yeah. Let me mark oh. that down. 44 militia, guys. 44. Four. Four. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you save him. I don't know. Maybe that was, that was too soon. All right, guys. We are going to do us a quick... 10 minute intermission so we can get right back into this uh, this goodness. Man, I just fucking love playing DD with you guys. Um, awesome. Holy shit. We do 10 minutes here. This intermission, man, it is a collection of work that has all been inspired by and around this show by a collection of artists that I just love to pieces. Thank you to everybody who has submitted all this incredible stuff. Um, it, uh, God, it's, it's the best, it's the best thing about this, man. We, it, it just, it fills my heart with joy. Um, original music by Sandy Stein, all these incredible artists that submit big shout out to our studio team, Stephanie and Sean. Um, I just fucking a man. I love this. I cannot wait to get back to it. Hang with us 10 minutes, get your pee, fill up your water for those crit sips. Don't forget to hydrate. And we will be back in 10 minutes to fucking, to fucking rock like the big bad booty rockers. Woo woo. Uh, uh. We're adults. <laughs> People come to us when things go wrong. <laughs> oh, I don't know, bro. God, oh. but they do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Why? Uh, why? 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 Oh, don't. <laughs>
Oh, hey. I bet you thought I was going to be somebody else, huh? Well, uh, I was wondering if you had a moment to talk about the green lady. You know, Shantia. Ever heard of her? Uh-huh. Yeah, only for a premium Twitch subscription will I enforce or uh, allow Shantia to let the good light into your own life. The more you tip, the more life and light you get. You know, it's really, it's really, what? it's, it's, oh, what the, oh, hey, Abby, hey, what hey. the fuck are you doing? Oh, you, this is like a thing for everybody. I'm right? like, I'm yeah. right on time. I'm, oh, oh, geez. Get back. Uh, oh, 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 sit down. Oh, geez. Although she's right about those Twitch subscriptions. Hi, guys. Brandon McClinan. You might remember me from sitting in this chair previously. Uh, she's correct. Shantia's grace is beautiful. And if you sub to our Twitch channel, something, something, she will hook you up in a good in a way. All right. So welcome back, guys. Holy shit. Sorry, we have to have some fun uh, whenever anybody's here. Uh, our dear Tennis Smooth Hands was attacked by the true big bad, which is internet problems. And so we've got her here at the, at the compound with all of us. Yay! And so, uh, yes. Shantia will provide mole eggs. Mole eggs to all Upon of mole to mole everyone. Eggs. Mole eggs yes. to all. Uh, mole eggs to all. For, yes. Mole eggs from the green lady. Lady, green lady. the green lady. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? All right. And what was it, Creefer Sutherland? You guys, you can never let me have. I'm, I like my name. <laughs> Us as well. They yes, are so we good that we get to make fun of them. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you can't do anything with. Bad oh, names I, suck. I never think you about know, it. You know, I don't want to say, I was just about to start saying bad names, but they're like people that are real. So <laughs> like, I feel so bad. You're I don't lying. want anyone to feel. <laughs> Jakes. Every, yeah, like. Every Jake, Jake. is the one. Jake. Oh, no. I can't even say it without laughing because it's so <laughs> untrue. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. You quit the show. <laughs> <laughs> I really found self again. I get the hint. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back, everybody, <laughs> yeah, to yeah, We yeah. D and D, <laughs> the five positive live tabletop role playing experience. Uh, holy crap! These are uh, this. There's there's no illusion to this. These are some of my favorite people in the world, and uh, just it's the, the the hijinks are just going to get hijinkier. We're gonna the joshing will be out of control. Um, Hi thank you, guys. Thanks. Higher jinx. Higher <laughs> jinx. Oh, oh my God. He's changed the game again. Oh, that's a great idea. Higher. The jinx have never I don't been know. higher. <laughs> oh my God. All right, guys. We uh, When we last it. left the ferocious five, they had I just agree. used the uh, the divine intervention of the goddess Shantia um, to, uh, and the power of the Raka mixed in with Divot's connection to death as well as the spiritual energies of both Brunor and Rial managed to purify the age of uh, Ubre the Callous, now Ubre the Creaseless. Um, the, uh, the young woman was able to access the spirits and kind of was able to, to gift each one of them with a little bit more prophecy, um, but the power was too great and she, uh, and she fell. Uh, the rest of the group then kind of went about setting their worldly powers to use. The uh, the forces of Buraka uh, moving northward as the uh, as both the the five dancers, the big bad booty rockers, and the uh, and the elite fighters of the Burak and Stone Reavers move north um, to kind of see what's going on with Sumner Milton over in Redella, uh, while the dancers put up shop in Nambul Deer. Uh, the last thing that happened, however, was as one of the Burak and Stone Reaver guards started to walk near the uh, the western stone bridge that goes to the road that you all followed um, to get to Amarilla, which let me put you back in there. Um, you see, do, do, do. now I'm seeing because it's weird. Here we go. You see uh, one of the, uh, the Burakans returning to his post on the roads nearby uh, is snatched by one of these electric blue tentacles. <laughs> and pulled into the water. Uh, you see, you know, with a last gasp of air as his face disappears beneath the, the tides of the stream, which now just kind of seems to be flowing a little harder than before rather than just the babbling river stream. You see the waters kind of start flowing a little faster as this electric blue tentacle grabs onto this guy's leg and pulls him down the river to the south. <laughs> what do you guys do? Cool, cool, cool. Can we uh, wrap this up here in a minute? Can we just go... <laughs> We gonna figure that out before they start plucking off people from the shores. The shores. Yeah, pardon the pun, but let's dive right in. Am I right? <laughs> you son of a bitch. I don't like it. 
Yeah, I'm done here. Let's go. All right. Yeah, you know, you see the uh, the drowned hounds, not one to take for uh, for for being made to wait, uh, have kind of added to the tempo, showing the pressure that they have on this town once more. As one of these uh, these Burakans disappears down the river, you know, you guys kind of like sprint up toward the waterline and look down, and it's like he's already you know half a mile away. You see the blue tentacle disappearing, just slithering away at an insane speed as he's drawn underneath the water. You know, you haven't seen him come back up for air in a bit, and so that's uh, that's probably not the best. Can you imagine the speed of that water going up your shirts? (laughs) 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 It always gets in my ear. I'm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm. I I really like living in water, but that's even unpleasant for me. And if well, at that speed, sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you see a couple of the uh, the Burakans run up to you guys. You know, they're they're all they, they see what just happened, and they're kind of looking to you guys, the heroes. Uh, to ask, ask to like what to do. It's like, do they? Do you want them to, to run down there? Do you want them to hold their post? And you guys are going. What's? Uh, they're kind of looking at you for answers. No, no, I don't want. Did you see what just happened to your friend? Why the fuck would you go near the river? Sorry. You, no. You're, you're right. Avoid all water. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying. Yeah, that's not a bad call. You, uh, you, you know, you see uh, after you say that they uh, they start pulling back the ballista kind of more to a central location here near where the powdered dragon remains are, um, and they kind of get you know they get the kids away and they uh, and they start kind of ushering all the uh, everybody to stay away from the water. It's not a bad call, right? Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, we gotta go to the water. That doesn't mean they Obviously. gotta go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, Don't. We're the five, though. Just. You know that, right? Fucking five. Yeah. <laughs> we make the safety videos. You've seen us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then let, let us go. All right. So you guys, uh, you know, you, you start kind of following this uh, this river to the south. Like I said, it kind of wraps around the southern peak of the Malachi Mountains and continues uh, to, to the east, uh, where it then connects with a large body of water that runs to the ocean. Um, you know, you, uh, this is still fresh water, but Bruner, you can't help but notice that the, the scent of the salt water in the air, um, as you guys, you know, finally leave the city of Amarella behind. Looking back, you know, you see the, the defense forces of these, these 44, uh, Burakan militia, you know, as they kind of bunker down and, uh, and, and are, are ready. You know, one of the last things that you see as you kind of bend down the last river is, uh, is the youthful, uh, Ubre, the, the Kreesleth, kind of stepping forward. You see she's got a hammer in her hand now. You know, it's kind of suited across over her shoulders and she's looking around and you can't help but notice how like Toko, the big giant bugbear, seems somewhat smaller than her, even though he actually stands quite large. Like her, the force of her will is so powerful. You're looking at, you know, one of the, uh, one of the greats in her prime. And, uh, and so you see, you know, you feel pretty comfortable right now that the, uh, that the town itself is, is in good hands. Um, you know, as the Dancing Dragon Inn and all that kind of disappears, you start off through the twisting trees. You know, you notice as you move farther down to the south that the, uh, if you'll recall where the accursed church was, there was that taint of the grace, the, the, the shadow fell taint that was spreading um, across the land. You can't help but kind of notice as you proceed southward that that area seems to be increasing. You know, as you look down from kind of the hilly mountain range areas, you're running through the forests that hug the outside of the Malachite Mountains. Um, you see, you know, right where it splits away from the mountain finally and the water continues down where Crefus has told you, you know, if you follow it, it'll take you to a waterfall. Um, you guys do notice across the barren lands, you know, as you see the trees all around you are green and and uh, and and orange and and some of them are dying like it's the dead of winter you know each of them seems to be out of place in time um, but even the ground itself you know in, in the in the region just west of you guys uh, is that 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 creep of the shadowfell seems to be growing as well um, so yeah you guys uh, somebody give me a a d20 as you guys uh, are running down this river path. All right. Oh. Nice. Mm. Very nice. You guys, you know, you, you're uh, you're going down these waters, and uh, I'd say you've, you've, you guys have probably been, you know, running pretty good. Are, Bruno, are you riding Brian right now, or is he kind of doing his own thing? 
Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, I'm right, Brian. Perfect. You know, you you Brunor again taking to the water. You guys coast through the water like a knife, like a hot knife through butter, um, and you're kind of like leading the way as you see Brian kind of like trying to smell the water around him and stuff. You, you guys are just kind of guiding down the path, seeing if there's any any details that you might catch as aquatic creatures. Um, and it's about uh, I'd say ten minutes down this this path as you know you see the Malachite Mountains starting to go farther and farther away in the distance as this river continues toward the the southern part of the region, you know, closer to the Argovian territories. Um, as you're following this water line, you come around a river bend and there's this old like weeping willow just kind of like crept out over this ledge where there's kind of a muddy embankment of water and a lot of water is gathered up. And where the, the, the there's kind of like a small pool of liquid that's spilled beyond the river bank, you notice there's just like a ton of dead fish are just kind of like pulsing in the water. You know, there's just like a collection. They've all managed to get caught in this kind of like in crop of land. Um, but as you guys kind of like ride through the river, you can't help but look over and notice that it looks like all these fish have kind of flown into this thing, but then never flow out. And there's just, their bodies are just gathering uh, there. Um, if anybody, uh, Bruno, if anybody wants to make a survival check, um, you can kind of like investigate or a medicine check could also be used here. I would, uh, I would say. That's a crit hit right there. Holy crap. That's a dope play. Happy belated birthday, best friend. Yeah. Look at that. Thora crits. Yeah, you got the 20 and the 1 there. There's something about that red green. Good, and, y'all. Mm. and terrible. That's, that's the perfect example of what 40 feels like. <laughs> Best and worst at the exact same time. It's either the best day of your life or the worst day of your life. I can get ready for it. <laughs> Be ready. This is me from the other side. All right. So, uh, Thoricus, uh, you know, as a dwarf uh, immune to uh, uh, certain poisons, you're not one to uh, to take the, the easy way of, uh, of investigation. And you, rather than, you know, as you see them start kind of like looking through the gills of the animals and uh, trying to determine maybe a cause of death, like there's nothing weird about like the water itself. There's not like a vacuum here or anything. Thoricus, you just kind of grab one and take a bite. And you spit it out real quick. The fish are poisoned. Yeah. Oh, right. The poison. Poison. Kuzco's poison. Kuzco's poison. That's poison. My spinach bones. <laughs> Ew, classic, classic. Uh, yep. The, the, the fish are poisoned to everyone, just so everyone knows. Oh, gross. Jeez. Yeah, right? I wonder what's killing them. That's a very good question. Poison, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Damn it. That's absolutely right. <laughs> The defense rests, Your Honor. <laughs> I think it's the poison. It should have been obvious. Yeah. That should have been obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Bruno could cast vicious mockery. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Hmm. I'll drink to that. <laughs> All right, so, um, Thorcus, you do notice one thing, like this, this source, you know, it might, you know, the correlation does not necessarily equal causation. You, you look to the, the way the waters are flowing. These waters are flowing from the north, from where you came from. Like fish should not be poisoned to the north if the drowned hounds are the source of it. You would think it would be coming from downstream where they claim to be. Um, and so it, that is something, you know, again, there's no crits on spell checks, skill checks. Um, but it's that's that's something you are privy to in this moment. Like not only are these fish poisoned, but they were poisoned upstream, not downstream. And downstream is where the the drowned hounds are. Downstream is where the drowned hounds are. Correct. So, yeah, how how would I figure out where that poison came from? Because I feel really bad if I built a water slide in the middle of a poison fucking river. So, Brunor would know because she actually breathes water. Um, you're not detecting, like, a, a traceable amount of poison in the water. Um, 
You, you and Brian both, however, have noted how strange this water feels. And so, you know, you, if, if it, I would say if it was poisoned, Brunor, you would probably be feeling the effect of that um, if it was strong enough for it to affect you. Um, but it currently does not appear to be. But yes, it would appear that the source of whatever poison killed these fish uh, is coming from upstream. Which you guys know, again, you, you know, knowing the region, that stems all the way as high as like that river flows directly through Nambaldir and then you know south around the mountains, gaining width from the water th from the mountains, and then coming to where you guys are now in the southern bend of the Malkai Mountains. Cool. So that means <laughs> this is a bad. future as problem. It's a what? A future problem? Is this a future as problem or? Ooh, yeah. that sounds maybe, yeah. I think that's right. <laughs> like, noted. The guy yeah, is still being it. killed by the tentacle, <laughs> though. Yeah. We notify the EPA. Yeah. <laughs> Dorcas tastes another bite of a fish. Ah, oh, dang it, I forgot. I forgot. We, can, we can fox him. <laughs> fox him. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that was your uh, that was your, your random encounter that you guys rolled there. Um, and so you continue on down the uh, down this this river bend path, and as you finally start, you know, nearing toward the uh, the end of uh, um, that, you know, as you see the river and basement kind of get wider, you start hearing the sound of the waterfall. You know, a pretty large waterfall. You can hear that kind of hollow sound uh, as this river apparently reaches an outlet in front of you. As you guys are kind of moving down this river, I'll drop you in over here. You guys are up here in the top left. Um, so, uh, pardon me for a moment oh, while damn. I do the DM stuff of all this. You guys are coming down this river. Um, and then you fight Ultros because it's Final Fantasy 3. Uh, no, so you guys are coming down this river and you see, you know, the, the opening waterfall in front of you. You see kind of that, that, that mist that kind of raises in the air around a large waterfall. You know, kind of the, the beams of light create small little pockets of rainbow lights that kind of dance around this actual beautiful vista. You know, you see kind of like the, the various shrubs and flowers from all the different seasons all kind of at the same time. The the forests of multicolors, you know, around you as it kind of goes down to this embankment. You, know, you guys don't quite see beyond there, you know, down where the boat and the tower and all that stuff is right now. You're, you're just kind of coming up through the river. Um, but you see it opens, you know, the river kind of gets into this big large lake area and you see a bunch of rocks you know and the the flowing white waters of the rapids that spill over and create this waterfall um, as you guys are coming up you notice you know there's this bobbing body just floating in the water you know just in, at where it kind of opens into the the pond before it dumps over you know the water kind of slows down you see the Burakin, uh, uh stone reaver just floating you know against the shore Like floating on his back, or like face down. Damn it! It's the bad. He ain't gonna be in rush hour three. <laughs> <laughs> Give us rush hour three, though. My favorite outtakes of all time. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Do we notice anything else? All right, so you do not. You see no signs of the electric tentacles. You know, as you kind of move up into the pond area near close to the body, you can't help but notice this large, giant, decrepit tower um, that sits on an island, you know, in the middle of this big body of water. Uh, it's it's ancient looking. The stones are, you know, covered in moss and the roof, you know, withered with time has patches of holes uh, where you can imagine rain just pours directly into. Some of the bricks have fallen away and then you can see small sections of the walls just completely withered away and crumbled with time. Uh, the island itself, you know, not of much, uh, of much notoriety as, you know, as you see a sandbank on the western side, um, a bridge that connects the, the road that comes to, you know, from the, the northeast down through across this bridge and then continues on in two different directions to the south and to the southwest, uh, you know, the, if you follow the west road, probably closer to where that taint of the uh, of the shadow fell uh, is spreading. But here, you still see the effects of this Feywild uh, influence on the surrounding fauna. As you guys kind of get to the pond area, you you know you hear the <laughs> the flow of the mist of this waterfall, and you look up and find uh, and you know and you and you see just floating right at the base of the waterfall, you know, this great rapids of water that push very ferociously as it pushes, you know, with the great force of this waterfall pushing the water down. Just anchored right in the middle is this old ship, you know, about 40 feet long, uh, pretty lackluster 
lackluster as far as not having like a sail or anything like that. You don't see cannons on the main bow. It's just this long, uh, uh, like old brown watery wood. Uh, at the back of the ship, you know, it's probably about 40 feet long. At the back, there's this big wooden uh, box area that kind of appears to be maybe like a cabin of sorts. Um, but yeah, you just see this ship, you know, just ominously kind of floating in the water. Uh, Rial, uh, your perception is actually high enough. You also notice uh, just on the other side um, here to the to the west of the I'm going to ping you guys over here to the west of the uh, um, the ship. There's a bunch of boxes and barrels and stuff all stacked up under these trees. Mm. Huh. But uh, as far as electric blue tentacles or anything like that, that is all you see. Hmm. It's a big ass boat. I apologize. I muted my ass. I was still on mute, but the reason I like went down on the map is I wanted to grab the Blue Rockin's body and at least bring it to shore so it doesn't go over the waterfall or anything. And it looks like Runor like followed me down that way too. So I like it. We this ship though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, you know, you, you pull him out and you look at, you know, you look at his face still kind of twisted in horror as he clearly was drowned. Um, you know, they have a, they certainly have a calling card. Um, but uh, but yes, in the, it, it, at your assumption was right. It does not appear that this creature, this tentacle ever allowed him to come up for air and then just, just discarded him. You know, you see the lash marks around his throat, um, you know, bruising and, and, and fierce rubbing from where he was drugged through the riverbanks. Um, but that's, that's about it. You know, no... Uh, cause of death is pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, no, clear enough. And since Brunor's there, I want to ask, the Drowned Pounds, without their ship, would they be at an advantage or a disadvantage? <laughs> That's a uh, very good ship, I see. Yep, but um, you can give it a go. You could, you could really give it a try. <laughs> Just... Just saying, I don't, I don't, um, it is made of wood, but, uh, they've also lived through a lot, so, I but I've never seen the ship on fire, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> no, look, look at the bow, though, it's the SS Children Church. <laughs> <laughs> Baronet. I don't <laughs> that. Oh, jeez. Not to be confused with the Dwarfenage. No. <laughs> Children church is not even close. Not even close. Children church. <laughs> They're actually taller. <laughs> Less facial hair. Less facial hair. Taller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm with Rial on this one. I don't think they're gonna respect us if we don't come out swinging. Yeah, again, like I said, you're kind of looking around, you know, you don't notice, uh, you don't notice anybody. That, that there's kind of an eerie, you know, the, the, the rushing, crushing sound of the thunderous waterfall kind of beating the, the water in front of you. Um, you know, it's, it's almost pleasant. You know, it's like a beautiful day. The sunbeams are coming down, you know, just the right way, They're catching the mist of this waterfall. Um, you know, kind of shining a light a little bit on those two stark contrasts to the surroundings, the strange boat that floats in the middle of the water, uh, and then this, this large tower on the island as well. Hmm. Such a pleasant day. It'd be a shame if anyone's boat caught on fire. Are we <laughs> all game for this? Like, is that is that cool? <laughs> I really I, think we should defer to Bruno. I mean, I'm, I just uh, I first I just take to I said hold hold that thought hold that thought. So I take I hop onto Brian and I kind of take to the skies because they requested my presence. So I'm going to show them my presence. Breezy. I sneak up into the trees. That's also okay. What are you doing? I trust my I trust my friends also. <laughs> Anybody sneaking has to give me stealth checks. Okay. You Just in case it. anybody else wanted to follow suit. <laughs> stealth check. You got it. You got it. Stealth check. <laughs> you got it. Real rolled like a one. Real rolled like probably a two and got a twenty-five. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you need for that? Uh, stealth check. Still? Oh. Ooh, oh. Nice. Yeah, you guys are, you guys are doing boys. good. 22s. Woo! And yeah, no longer disadvantage on your stealth checks, Thoricus, because you're sweet. White Ranger armor. The, uh, 
I hate mail. Hate mail. Heck yeah. <laughs> it's now. It's in there now. Hey, it's in there now. All right. So Thor. All right. Uh, so Brunor, you hop on uh, on Brian the Dracodile, you know, and he he kind of raises his wings up. Where do you want to go? Like, where do you want to fly to? I kind of want to fly to just here at the tip of this uh, this little cliffy boy down here on the waterfall, just to get kind of a better look around, I guess. All right, and sweet. Give he... me a give me a perception check, Brunor. Now that you're you know kind of on that ledge there, Rial, you can do the same. Um, now that you guys have kind of managed to get up to that point. Um, Tina, if you, uh, if you want to get up to like the ledge and stuff, I would have you make a stealth check as well. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a stealth check. God damn, Bruno. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no advantage. I'm sorry. I can't just give it a crit every time. People will start to get no. Um, so 11. Take it rigged. All right, so you know, you guys, uh, you start kind of creeping up to this ledge here. You know, you hear the thunderous war, roar of this waterfall. You see the the, the, the water vapors of, of just appearing in the air, the small ringlets of, of rainbow light. Um, those of you uh, that uh, actually really at this point still, it's probably only Rial. Rial, you're aware of the uh, the barrels and boxes and stuff. You notice they're all wet, um, you know, as you're a little closer to this ledge now. It looks like they're like almost like laid out to dry. Um, there's just like various boxes and bags. You see maybe like a bag of barley and stuff like that. Like they're drying it all out. Um, but that's about all the details that you guys see. Um, Rial, uh, with with you being at the ledge, you can give me a perception there, actually. All right. You have one of the higher perceptions of the group. Let's see what we got. All right, 17, nice. Um, so yeah, you uh, you kind of start, you know, perusing. You, you, you let the, the range of your sight kind of go around, you know, divot your best of eyes, also granting you kind of a good, a good advantage, looking around for invisible things or, you know, anything of that like, and you really don't see any. Um, the only thing that kind of pops to your attention, uh, Rial, is there's, over on that island, um, kind of just like set off to the side by itself, there's this strange lone barrel just kind of set on this grassy peak here. Uh, I'm just going to ping it down here so you can see where I'm talking about. Um, but as you look around, you know, it's like you're looking at the at everything, you know, set aside all by itself, um, no other boxes or bags nearby, and not soaking wet like the other boxes that you noticed uh, over to your west. So that that with your with your 17 perception, that's what that's what you notice basically. That's what you pick up on the hmm. surroundings. Hmm. I don't trust that barrel, even though I see it. <laughs> I've never fully really trusted a barrel, but this barrel I trust the least. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't know why you guys are so nervous about my barrel. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll at least report that in Thorcus because we are, you know, not like within. This, this yeah, there's like there's a loud <laughs> waterfall in between you. <laughs> no, 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 I got you. You got me. R yeah. Random barrel on the uh, Tower Islands. Mm. Just remembering that we left a mimic, so. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, no. Uh, Wait, is it wet? Everything's a mimic it's now. Not wet, not You're wet. Right, that tower might be a mimic. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome to Mimic River. Where <gasps> <laughs> the water is mimic. Son of a bitch. We were just waiting for the, the Mimic River episode. <laughs> yes. Um, so, the hey, I can speak to animals. Can I, can I hear anything in the water? Even like scallops or anything? Like, can I, is there any, like, I guess I'm trying to think of like, is there something in the water? <laughs> yeah. I think you'd have to go into the water. Oh, damn it. Oh, so, oh. Because there, there's the thundering sound of this waterfall, you know, and so it's like if you're trying to talk to the now, if you want to search for, uh, you know, creatures along the banks, uh, you, you're certainly welcome to do so. Um, but yes, I would say yeah. if, if you want to discuss with the creatures underneath this this waterfall, uh, you, you uh, would need to be submerged. Bruno, I have a fucked up idea. Okay, what? Uh, um, we have this dead speak to the dead so if you can't find anything down there to talk to we could 
like tie a rope to him and toss him down in there and then ask him some questions. <laughs> Uh, I hate to throw a kink in your plans. The only thing we speak with dead, they don't know anything that's happened since they died. Aww. Oh, so we can't like bring him back and then like, throw him in? Yeah. No, I love the idea, but it is, it's literally <laughs> built in to the spell. It's like they don't have new information. They, they can only tell you what they've known up until when they okay. die. Can okay, I see never if mind. Any... Sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm no it's fun. okay. I like the idea, honestly. It's a great idea, um, yeah. Can I no. see if there's anything behind the waterfall? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so you, uh, I mean, yeah, you, you look down. Uh, you don't, you see, I mean, there's like rocks that have fallen and everything. And there's, it's like, yeah, you could probably stand on like a little area back there, but there's no like hidden cave system back there or okay. anything like that. You also, again, it's like you guys are actively perceiving to see you're looking for traps and snares. And, you know, it's not like you're just like rup, 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 walking around. You don't see anything like that. Like there's, you know, it's like the, uh, the, in fact, there's no sign of Crefus at all. Now, this this ship certainly is an ocean ship, Bruno. You, you know, you've seen the difference. This this river is actually a little small for a ship this size, and its presence seems a little strange. Um, but uh, but it's like that's that's about it. You know, there's there's a a, a lack of of much else than that. There is this Children. barrel on the island. It's by itself. It's down there. It's not a mimic. <laughs> it's a mimic. <laughs> okay. It's a mimic now. No, I'm kidding. That wasn't anything. I was just, uh, I want, everything's a mimic. You guys were right. Go on. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, no, it doesn't look like there's like an attack coming from behind the waterfall. Just or anything. do it. Just do it. Make it happen. Well, I Cut just want to give okay. everyone fair warning. Please, whatever you do, don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. <laughs> You know what, Thoricus? You're gonna have it your way or no way at all. I think we're moving too fast. You got it. It's another line. <laughs> all right, so there you go, guys. That's what you see. What do you do? Do something crazy. Do something crazy. Okay, so I just fly out. And I'm just going shalom. <laughs> all right. Shalom. So you uh, you start flying out, Bruno, and as you know, you kind of get closer to the uh, the ship. You know, you're peering down. You're you're all on pins and needles. You're you're waiting for like the great you know teeth to fall, and uh, you're kind of flying around. You know, the water you know crushing down on the river around you. It's kind of hard to make out too much sound, but uh, as you start flying closer, you hear this <coughs> all these caws of these crows, and they seem to be emanating from inside this uh, this wizard tower on the island. But they all seem to be contained oh, within the tower. tower. Oh. That's the name of the asset. I didn't mean to. That's not like a detail from the, okay. the game. But that's, that's called the wizard tower. That was my incarnate brain. I'm sorry. Mm. There might be a wizard in there, too. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, Skitty is. Well, I did something. Does anyone want to do anything, or am I going to keep going? Because I'm just going to keep going. All uh, right, no, I, I, uh, no, go ahead. Um, how far away am I from that barrel that everybody's nervous about? Um, I, you know, probably, probably a couple hundred feet. Can I, can I get it? Is there it? any way that I could yeet him? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you trying to hit it with? Um, I just want to, I just want to bust that barrel open. Like, like Donkey Kong? Diddy's in there, bro. I gotta get him out. <laughs> <laughs> or, no, wait. Diddy was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, the fucking sound effect. Okay. Well, just like I say, I kind of want to like cyclone toss Divot like up into the sky and like have him like Akuma, like dark Hadouken. Elvish yeah, we'll start with that. Yeah, throw me out arm. into the fucking abyss over the water, please. <laughs> Do it, my man. <laughs> you got this, bro. You're already gonna die anyway, or have yeah, died. I'm the lightest I'm one. I'm. You're I'm, actually I'm already dead, aren't you? Yeah, where are you trying to land, Divot? Uh, come on, land on the yeah, boat. Yeah, throw me son. to the boat. Throw me to the boat. <laughs> throw me to the boat. I will eat you all the way to the schooner. All right, Divot. Yeah, you get a you get a shot off on this. Uh, go ahead, Cal. Are you, are you Eldritch Blasting it? He asked the Warlock. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Or. Yeah. Or. What were you gonna say? There's there's another spell that I know someone else and myself yeah. and and many others are very fond of and I don't know. Are you calling? For how it? dedicated you are to this, but. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll shatter the barrel. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, hit that barrel with some fucking shatter. <laughs> All right, bro. So you see as you know, Thoracus using his you know, massive strength just kind of yields you up onto his axe, which he swings around. You jump off into the air, you know, past the waterfall. You know, you, you realize the great distance between you and the ship as you're starting to fall from the, from the sky. Um, you uh, you know, kind of offset yourself by the, the casting of your magics, using the burst of the beams to set you back up in the air and you kind of kind of lightly land on the boat. Uh, go and give me a dexterity save, Divot. See how well you land on this uh, on this boat. <laughs> uh, a dexterity saving awesome. throw. Yes, sir. Catching. Oh, I hit I hit the thing. I'm afraid to hit it again. Okay. There we go. <sighs> nice. Twenty four. Yeah, you land like Ooh. a boss. Um, you, you know, kind of roll using the, the momentum of your body to absorb the fall. You kind of land at the end of the ship, stand forward, and you watch as the magical orb of your shatter flies over. It's a, it's a dead smack hit on it, Divis. Go ahead and cast a spell. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. I just remember there was something else about it that I wanted to make sure. Oh shoot! I hit I hit it in the spell menu instead of the attack. Oh, it's it, it popped. Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, all right, so it's a ten foot radius. You center it right there on the uh, on that on that uh, barrel, correct? Yeah. All right. It, um, wait. It, it gets a saving. Let me think throw. about that. Just because you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever trusts um, me. Yeah, I mean, it's not like. It's not I, by I the tower. Hit the tower and no. the barrel if I wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Then yeah, just the barrel. All right. So dead center on that barrel, we get a a, a big uh, shatter. It does get disadvantage on this Constitution saving throw. Oh, so which probably goes, oh, it rolled a barrel. sixteen and then a two. <laughs> so it <laughs> fails. <laughs> Divot, you send the waves of shatter. It kind of cracks the ground a little bit. You see some of the rocks trickle back down into the river. And you see this barrel just like, rather than blowing apart like you would expect, it just blows up into the air. And then you see it bounce down this hill and settle in the sand embankment near that uh, that bridge on the west side of the island. You know it took the uh, the brunt of your, uh, roll your, what is it, 3d8 thunder damage. Three come on. Yeah. Nice, 15 damage, very good. Uh, you know it that it ate that 15 damage, but uh, rather than maybe perhaps a standard barrel, this barrel, uh, ate the shock wave and then kind of was knocked down the hill. You see it, you know, it just kind of disappears as the ledge of the, you know, hill behind it. You just see it kind of settle on the sand there. You know, Rial, you, you probably have the best look on that. Um, and so, yeah, you see the barrel just kind of settles into the sand down here at the corner of the uh, of the island. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Dim it, you're uh, you're standing on the uh, on the on the boat now. You know you're kind of feeling the the waterway. You, the ship definitely has to be anchored right now. Like the 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 force of the water around you, you can feel like the water pulling on the board of the ship. You know, beckoning to bring it downward. Um, so the ship is definitely anchored. You look around. You know, it's about 15 feet wide, 40 foot long on the top floor of this. You know, you're looking around for like storage grates or anything, and there there's strangely none. There's no hatches or anything that go. Down down into the innards of this ship. The only thing that you see is, on, like I said, on the back end of the ship, there's like a large rectangular, you know, probably like 10 foot tall, uh, square boxed cabin looking thing. Uh, but the door to that is is firmly shut. Oh, will I make my way towards that door? Yeah, you do. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, as you you know, you kind of start walking up toward the door there. You know, you're listening to see if you hear anything. And again, just the crushing sounds of this waterfall in the background are are too hard to make out. You you know, you kind of like get up close to it. And you don't you don't hear anything inside. 
All right. Um, one more time. Ooh, I kick the door in. All right. Uh, you, you know, you walk up and you kick it into the door. Divot, it appears to be like several latches on the inside. Like you put all your strength into it, but the wood doesn't really give way. Like they're like it's firmly fastened shut the way that it is. You're starting to like look around at it and you notice something very strange, Divot. You're like, how the hell would they steer this thing? How could they see there's no, like why is everything, yeah, like this ship almost looks watertight. And then as you have that thought, the ship underneath your feet starts trembling and you feel the entire ship gets pulled underwater. So pardon again, I've done it where the thing is on the map, but uh, that ship right there is now underwater. Divot, you feel the surge of water kind of blow you off the bow of the thing. You're kind of floating in the water. You're, you're a skeleton, so you're mostly skeleton now. So you float uh, or you sink pretty easily. And you're kind of like dropping down with the ship around you. You see the ship finally keeps sinking down. It's probably 50 feet deep, uh, this, this, this little water area that you guys are in. And it settles right at the base. And you see now that you're underwater. There are, t there's like two dozen of these giant blue tentacles. Just like floating around in the water around you. One of them is held to the ship and appears to be anchoring it down. I'm gonna need everybody to roll initiative. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Oh, where's my token? Oh, I'm right. sorry, I didn't have the order open. Hold on, I'm so sorry, I did it again. Uh, let me clear it. All right, so just don't let, there we go. All right, it's now it's back. I'm sorry, it's ready. We're good now. Select your token, do the thing. Oh. Ooh. This is where I get my crits. This is where I get my crits. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dirty crit though. It's uh it's it's not the the green kind. <laughs> I was gonna light this joint anyway. Um alright, so yes, we've got you guys. Alright, let me organize you here. I'm gonna try and I'm not erasing it. I'm not. Why won't it let me into my settings? There we go. Sorry, this is super exciting, I bet. Um, <laughs> there we go. Yo, you ever be like, I'm out of weed. Oh, there's more in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brunor the Serpent in true fashion, you know, you're the first to notice this, the ship uh, withdrawals underwater, you know. Um, a submarinal ship, just so you guys, for those of you who don't play a ton of D&D, that is not a thing that, that happens. You know, it's a, that, this, is a, this is not something that you would be aware of, like a technology that anybody has. Uh, so the ship now, you know, you see it submerge underwater. On it, the uh, your friend and ally, Divot, as they sink, you know, about 50 feet below the water there, uh, and then float in the, in the icy currents of this water that, that, that surges past. Um, again, uh, Brunor, you're up though. You, you know, you're kind of flying up above where the ship was. You see the, the, the tower before you on the island with the crows. You see the barrel in the sand at the pit of the, of the island. Uh, you, you're also aware of the, of like the, 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 the wet boxes, barrels and bags to the west on this little embankment here. Um, uh, and the ship underwater. What do you do? Is Divot still floating, or did he sink down a lot already, or can I swoop? Because I'm pretty close to him. I mean, I guess I'm in the air, but can I do, like, a dive bomb and, like, pick him up? Like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You, utilizing, uh, I mean, especially with where the position where you were at right there. Yeah, you know, it's like Divot's not quite just a skeleton yet, so it's like there are still pockets of him that would, would help him be a little boy, and he doesn't sink as fast as the ship. Uh, but Divot, you know, you're looking around at a bunch a of these, bunch. like, blue electric <laughs> tentacles floating in the water. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, like look, Brian, they look like this. You know, they're yeah. all just like oozy boogie. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, you see about 12 of them. Oozy boogie, that's not a term you guys use a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you just said two dozen. Wouldn't that be 24? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, uh, it just, it's just one dozen. There's only 12 of them. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh, only 12. The... Well, then I unshit myself in the bushes. <laughs> what effect? You, you have to roll for unshitting. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he did not make me roll for shitting, though. 
because I had not I gotten to that part yet. Shitting <laughs> happens, but unshitting is an act, like an action. It's like you have to do yeah. it. You have to prep it. You have to prep to unshit. <laughs> All right. Well, this it's one's so glitched forever, awesome. so that's how many there is going to be now. Um, it's a prepared action. So yes, you, uh, you you know you're privy to these these tentacles lashing around. Like I said, they haven't uh, shown aggression towards you. They're kind of floating similarly to Brunor's hair in the water, just kind of tentacling around. Um, but you do see, you know, the ship rooted at the base of them, divot about halfway down the water. Brunor, yes, you can make it to him. Uh, do you want to have uh, Brian catch him or do you want to grab him? Uh, the Brian man. All right, so Brian's going to use his action on this turn to uh, to scoop up divot, but you do yeah. manage to stop him from sinking to the base of these waters. You splash in and you grab, you know, what's uh, what remains of his arm. As you see him just kind of looking around, you see all around you, Brunor, these uh, these giant blue electric tentacles. Cool, excellent. I would like to, while I'm riding on, because I'm close to, let's see, if I picked up Divot, I'd be like over here now with him. So I'm like, I, there's a tentacle kind of in front of me. Yeah. Or am I completely surrounded? Totally, yeah, no. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like they kind of, they're, it's, they're not necessarily surrounding the ship, but rather they're all over in this little lake area. So, you know, it's like you could scoop Divot and then kind of pop up and there's a tentacle right there if you want to do some business to it or something. It's, it is within range. Yeah, I want to do some business to it. I want to, I want to, well, I'm, well, we're going by it to land, hopefully closer to the island. I'm going to give him a little swingy swing. Nice. You know, as you kind of course through the water, you do that thing where you hop on Brian's like neck and shoulders and you just hold Angerell the Keeper in front of you. 17 AC is definitely good enough. 13 damage uh, is nice. You pierce through the outer skin. You have two attacks if you'd like to use the other one as well. Um... Is this all one creature? Um, you do don't not know. They, they don't. You don't see the tentacles connecting to a common thing. They all seem to go under the bottom of this lake. So it's oh. like you know, it's like the tentacles are coming up, but you don't see like a central creature. Um, and when you stab this one, you don't see the other ones like wince in pain or anything, or whatever a tentacle would do to look at the wince. <laughs> okay. One of those. Um. Is it possible for me to use my second attack to like, yeah, like, I guess make it so it won't attack me back, like disengage with it? Like, you know what I'm so saying? So the, like, the action, the way that your your two attacks work is like you use I, your you're action. Right, you're right. Yeah, so okay, it's like that okay, one okay. disengages see, its own I action. what I could like, whoop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, if right. you want to like move past it, it would get a, an attempt to grab at you now that you've, 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 uh, you've attacked it. So if you want to yeah. move toward the island, uh, it would try to grab at you. Or if you okay. just wanted to stop and like fight it there, you, you could just stop right there. I'll um, miss me again. It scared me. That's why. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a big giant tentacle. I get it. I'm scared yeah, it of it too. Scared the shit out of me. So I'm mad at it. <laughs> oh, I'm just swiping. Do. All right, it's so another six. Nice, 22 damage total to it. That's nice. You see it is bleeding, Brunor, as you slash through one of these giant tentacles. You see this just like electric blue blood just kind of starts dissolving into the water. And you see it running down the stream as this thing just kind of oozes this blood out of it. Um, it is still alive. Uh, and uh, so what do you want to do? Do you want to continue moving and risk it taking a swipe at you? Or do you just want to stay there? I want to stay here. Look at this. I, I'm going to continue, try to continue moving. Okay, perfect. You see as you swing by, it is going to, it's, it's going to try to swipe at you. Um, you have dope AC, but it, it, it could roll hot. Um, here we go. Plus six to this. 15 AC is no good. You see it kind of turn around and snatch at you as, you know, you kind of part the waters and start heading toward the island. I would say you can land on the, uh, on the island, Bruno, with the, the remainder. You, Divot, and, uh, and Brian on the island. Cool. Just a couple of brothers on an island. <laughs> <laughs> you guys too, as you're closer, Divot, you're also aware of the sound of crows coming from within this uh, this wizard's tower. Um, you see the tentacle that, that you attacked, you know, it's like, ah, and it's mad. It's going to, uh, um, it's going to flip Marching. horizontally and look, at, and look at you. And uh, it, it unfortunately cannot reach you at the top of the rocks on the island there, but it's uh, but it's certainly paying attention to what you guys are up to. Um, and I yell at it. I go, I go. You scared me. I didn't. I was literally on the edge of my seat, and you, you scared me. And I'm like pointing at it, like <laughs> don't. It's like folding over. Sorry. Um, no, I'm sorry. I made you bleed. I'm sorry, but you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Brunor, so you're done. Um, now that you've landed on the island, like I said, you start, you, you hear the, uh, the, the calls of all these crows kind of emanating from within this, uh, this tower. Um, you see now in the cracks at the top of this, like I said, this tower is probably, it's actually about the same size as the boat. It's probably 50 feet tall. Um, and so you look near the top of this tower, you see there's this strange green source of energy that suddenly starts shining on the 20 round in initiative. Um, it is going to, uh, roll a d4 in this case, because there's, that's what you can see. Um, Creal, with its 25 perception, it's actually good enough to see you. Um, you Ooh. see this green oh, energy beam shoots blasts at you. It's a, a spell attack. 24 AC. You take 12 force damage. You see this green beam of energy like suddenly channel out of the top. You hear the even getting so loud that it pierces over the waterfall, the, the roaring thunder of this water. And uh, you watch this orb, you know, you kind of dodge out of the way at first, and then you see it like splits and then goes and blasts into you. Um, mm. But yes, uh, the uh, something at the top of this wizard's tower um, has, uh, has just shot a, a magical beam at you. Uh, but that's the end of its turn. Tina, you're up, what do you do? Oh my goodness, so I see everything that has just happened to Rial, so I reflexively, I, uh, I'm throwing a healing word in his direction mm. uh, just to bring back some life. Nice, go ahead and hit him with that. The sweet, yeah, you're, you're Thank you. definitely close enough too. Yeah, you see him, you know, again, this, this magic seems to, to, uh, to move a little differently than like your standard arcana. It seemed to kind of detect which way you were going and, uh, and, and, and waited for you to faint and then blasted you. Uh, you feel seven yeah. plus, what do you get? You get to add? Uh, plus six to Real, I believe, and plus four to myself. Mm, oh, little, shit. Little yeah. time out. So, uh, yeah, 13 <laughs> for you, Real. Thank you, Tina Smooth Hands. It's like it didn't even happen. Mm. Yes. Wow. It scared me too. Watch out, buddy. No, I was in the five. I just like uh, my my legs are short, and I'm all the way back here. I want to just like close the gap between Rial and I, and get a sus on everything. And all right, cool. So yeah, you uh, again. The people outside of the water can only see the one. Ten, I would say it's in range if you wanted to cast a sacred flame at it. Um, the uh, the one tentacle that has popped out of the water is the one that Brunor attacked. Um, and it's, it was like trying to chase them up out of the water. And so it can't reach them, but it is out of the water. That's the only one you can actually see. Um, the other ones are all underwater. I'm sorry, I know it's a okay, little- Okay, I, I see that tentacle flopping around and I, I see your sacred flame, but um, I think I'd like to ca uh, cast uh, banishment on the tentacle that I can see in the hopes that I'll banish the entire creature. Unfortunately, you casted healing word, which is your bonus action. So oh, all yeah, you can oh, cast yeah. is a cantrip. I'm sorry, that's the thing I always mess up on. It's the um, most confusing rule in the game. <laughs> Worry not. <laughs> okay, um, well then, yeah, Sacred Flame was a great idea. Um, I'm gonna just try to take a little shot at it to see if I, I hear my friends are in distress. I see what's going on, so I'm just going to. <laughs> you know, it's like okay. whipping at their feet as they kind of just land near the uh, near that strange tower that you just saw shoot that bolt of energy out. Uh, it gets to make a DC 16 saving throw. It rolled a four, so that's a fail, and it takes 15. Oh. Nice, so that nice. brings us to... All right, it's in super bad shape, but it's still going. You know, you see, you, you scorch it with that divine yellow light of Shanti, as you call this, this the searing uh, uh, radiant damage down. Upon it, it fails to save, so it takes the brunt of it, but it is still alive. You got anything else? Uh, no, I just want, if I can, the, the energy to look like like a whip around it, uh, trying to like uh, corral it in place. Yeah, you're kind of like trying to pull yeah. it back away from your friends as it kind of glows in your hand. You know, it's the, the searing radiant energy burning into its blue skin. You know, again, no mouth or anything. You just see it kind of writhe at the presence of the damage, but it, uh, it is still hanging on just barely. Um, so Tina, that's if that's the end of your turn, it is your brother's turn. Divot, what do you do? Uh, uh, uh. I look up at uh, Brian and Bruno, and I'm like, thanks for the ride, but drop me. <laughs> <laughs> you see Devin, you uh, fall once more. 
And as I'm as I'm flopping down into the water, I want to use Sculptor of Flesh to turn into a giant shark. Oh yes, yes he does. Let me pull up a. Let me get a giant shark real quick. Oh, you. <laughs> Caps lock is on, but it felt fitting anyway. It's like yes, giant shark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna smoke a giant shark. Just, oh, um, yes. I'm gonna smoke a giant, giant shark. shark. Giant, giant shark. shark. I wish the token was a little more menacing. I'm not gonna lie. Like that's. I wouldn't say that's a giant shark. <laughs> Here. You kind of look sweet. Divot, you're sweeter than I imagined you would look. Aww. Oh, you're great. Look at that, look at that giant shark. shark. Yeah. Doesn't that? No offense to the artists. It just. It feels a little lacking. It's really it's cute. That's the menacing. Yeah. The giant like, shark, do 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 giant. Sorry. I think that must be like Daddy Shark. He's got a lot on his mind. He's kind of like. Mm. He's got a mortgage to pay. Okay. But also, if it's, if it's, <laughs> it's got a shark mortgage. I'm gonna move that guy there so I can say he's got he's got a singed skin. Fish collar. But he also is like skelly looking, right? He's like a skelly shark. Oh, you a skelly shark? Yeah. Are you doing a skelly, mm -hmm. Gus? Ooh. Oh yeah, please, definitely. All right, I like it. So yes, yeah, so you see kind of like the D-Rex, you know, the uh, the decaying, skinned, rotting, death giant shark. As uh, Divot, you burn your action to uh, turn into a giant shark. You float in the water, you see tentacles all around. You know, this, this new shark sensation as you're smelling, even though it's electric blue blood, it's blood nevertheless. You know, that your shark brain is like, I gotta eat the fuck out of that thing. Um, but that is your action. You got anything else? Um, I don't think there are any bonus actions I can do as a shark. As a shark. As a shark. I can't stop. All right. Uh, well, if that's it, Divot, then it is Thoricus Onyx Heart's turn. Thoricus, you kind of see this, you know, this boat disappear suddenly where Divot fell. There is now a great giant shark. Uh, as you watch Brunor and Brian land on the island, you know, in the central part of this body of water. Uh, the boat now so completely submerged. You see one giant blue electric tentacle kind of peering out of the water. What do you do? I would like to uh, use Battle Alacrity to hop, skip, and jump over here by my good friends. Dope. Uh, and then use my secondary movement to kind of front flip over, pull out good old trusty dust, shoot one off in the air, fucking mile high club style. Just rub, sometimes you just gotta rub it out. You get two, um, but yeah, you should probably see if that, what the damage on the first one is. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, Thoricus, you burst off, you know, the, the power of the quick strike blade that imbues you to, to take this burst. You actually run so fast that you kind of skip across the tip of the water. You know, like, tss, 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 tss. You know your feet kind of land again and you start running. You jump off this cliff face, do a nice flip, plus a pop, 25 AC, five damage is enough. Thoricus, what do you do as you bust this front flip and shoot this arrow at this tentacle? How does it die? Slow. Slow painfully. painfully. You, like pin it to itself. Kind of, uh, I, you know, because it's a tentacle, it's hard to, to notice what it's feeling, but you know it's regret. You just know. <laughs> you see it, like it's. Yeah, yeah. You can taste it. Yeah, uh, the way that it kind of wriggles, like when you put salt on a snail. You know what I mean? It's like that. <laughs> yes, that is an apt description. As you see this thing writhe away. Um, divot. You do notice. Uh, as that one uh, withers and dies into the water, all of the other tentacles in the water, the other ones, they start shaking together at the same time. Um, Thoricus, that was uh, one of your two attacks. You want to? You want to take another shot? Oh no, there's nothing uh, above water. I'm sorry. You would have say, disadvantage from where you're at. You could see those two. You know, they're giant electric uh, tentacles, uh, but you would have disadvantage to hit them because you're shooting into water. No, I wanted to ask. Because of the uh, the electric boogaloo teeth that I Thoricus, those two, uh, what were they? Uh, and smash the faces together. What the fuck are those things called? Oh, the cobalt. Cobalt. Yeah, cobalt. Thank you. Is that energy that they had in their teeth the same energy that these tentacles are giving off? No. Uh. Good question, but no. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, not the same. So like, yeah, the, the, their electric oh. is, is more just like the color of them. You know, it's it's there's not like an actual like ambient electricity inside of them. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Okay. 
No, I'd be nervous too if there was a bunch of like electric right? things in the Cause water. Because I was like, that's also like the drider web, yeah. you know, that we picked up. It was like, there's, there's all I these only blame myself for your guys' paranoia. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared of you. You're gonna, you're gonna hurt me, man. I know it. Uh, I don't know what you're talking uh, about. All right, so I have another, I have another chance to do something. Well, I already moved, right? Yeah, so I guess I'll just take, I mean, why not, right? Or, Yeah, wait. it's just disadvantage. I mean, you can still hit with disadvantage. So I still have a bonus, also? You still have your bonus action, yes. Plus my second attack. Yeah, so what happens for you and Br Brunor both? When you attack, you, uh, you take the attack action, and because you're fighters of a certain level, you get to attack twice with your one attack action. So you've still just used your action. You still have a second attack as part of the attack action that you already used. So you still have oh, a second no, I attack. I I was pretty sure about that, but I just, I'm so scared of you. Like, literally, <laughs> I, I just want to ask you everything just to make sure. I don't sure. know what you're talking about. And I'm like, I check it for traps. And <laughs> <laughs> then I move three feet, and then I also check for traps there. And it's like... Second edition d, &D bro. Give me that 10-foot yeah. pole. <laughs> Dr. Crawl were just fucking, oh god. Uh, so yeah, I did a second shot at Ooh, See, he wasn't oh. happy not getting it the first time. <laughs> yeah. Friend, hey, oh, my yeah. friend. Ooh. Aren't you glad you did it? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Oh no, you had disadvantage. Oh, but you still hit, so I'm not I'm not taking the credit I'm away. It's 18. It's, yeah, 18 hits, you just didn't get the credit, I'm sorry. Um, because you do have disadvantage. That's so, that's so, we, two, there's two crits that are just waiting to be, whatever, we smoked, it's fine. All right, so 18 AC does hit, however, so even with disadvantage, you do hit him for five damage. Um, which one did you want to hit here of the two of them? The one uh, uh, directly below you or kind of next to that one? Uh, whichever one was below me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, the one directly down from you is this one. Okay, cool. So yeah, you uh, you see, you know, your immense strength, or is even firing an arrow into moving water. You, your your force is so strong with your uh, with your crystalline spider web bow. You manage to launch this thing down and pierce true. You blast this uh, this this tentacle for five points of damage. Uh, Divot, you are again, uh, once more aware of blood in the water uh, now from this still living tentacle. Uh, Thorkus, if that's the, uh, do you have anything else, buddy? Uh... Well, I do have that bonus action, right? You so, do have a bonus action, yeah, sorry. So I was thinking that I would use one of my, one of my superiority die to cast Rally on Brunor, because uh, the prince is most suited to fight in these conditions if we're doing underwater shit, so uh, why not bolster up a little bit, right? Don't Damn, heck yeah. So it's uh, you roll a superiority die and then you add your charisma modifier and that's how many temp HP Brunor gets. So that'll be seven. Nice, that's seven nice. extra HP. Hey Thank hey you. A little extra padding. I won't uh, let you down. Brunor, you you know kind of like feel the bound. You look back and Thor because he's just like oh shouts at you from the shore. You know you feel that <laughs> that faith that they have in you as as uh, as, as prepared for these these kind of moments. Um, you are instilled with the rally. Um, at the end of that turn, uh, it is actually, we're gonna go, maybe one, the one uh, Thoracus that uh, that attacked you um, is uh, is gonna strike at you. It's gonna attempt to, to take a shot. Uh, gets plus six to this. You see it whoosh, kinda ratch at you the same way it tried at Brunor. Uh, 23 AC. Um, that does hit. Um, so you make a DC... Oh no, you're grappled. Uh, you take 13 damage, and you see it just whoosh, wraps itself around you, Thorcus, and, uh, and pulls you into the water. You are grappled by this. I don't know why I keep saying that. Grappled. You're grappled by it. Grappled by Well, by you're good and grappled. <laughs> grappled. Uh, made from the worst stuff on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Back. And you take, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you take 13 bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. You are also pulled underwater. Oh, no, I just realized something. <laughs> <laughs> I so, to do something. <laughs> you're good for now, Thoracus. Um, you know, you have a, right. a dope constitution, uh, but uh, you, know, you probably don't want to stay underwater for too long. 
Uh, it is only six seconds around, you know what I mean? So it's like you can definitely hold your breath for, for 30 seconds. And so you're like, you're not gonna die right away. It's not Sonic, that stupid music. It's like, dunk, 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 and the bubbles right there, and you're like, and then you. Anxiety just, ugh. That game. That's it, yeah. I That's still feel it. <laughs> I feel it right now. All right, Thorgus, you have been snatched by an enor by, by this enormous tentacle. Um, but that is the end of its turn, and you see that none of the other tentacles uh, are apt to do anything. So you see that they continue floating uh, in, in the waters and uh, just kind of shaking with the vibration of that strange shock from uh, one, in, one of them having died. Uh, which brings us to Rial Othrabon. It's your turn. Oof. Yeah, Re I'm feeling... Rial doesn't know what Son of the Hedgehog is, but that drowning feeling right now, because I saw my buddy get pulled underwater, that's happening. But I at least have to thank my dear Tina Smooth Hands. I got hit by this strange magic. So like, thank you. Thanks to the lady. I'll be right back. And then I'm gonna jump off the ledge. And while I'm making my way to Making my way downtown. <laughs> Sorry, we lost there for a second, Jakey. Uh, when you were making your way downtown. <laughs> so uh -oh. what happened? Oh no! Did it hella freeze? That yeah. Did it? Yeah, we got oh. you back. All good. You were to making your way downtown. My... Oh man. <laughs> okay, so thanks to Tennis Smooth Hands, and then. As I do that, I make my awkward elf exit because elves just don't know socially like how to do anything. I'll even give it like the elf kiss on the forehead <laughs> before jumping off the ledge. Okay. And then um, I'm gonna do alter self while I'm heading towards the water into doomfish mode. Uh oh. The Boreal. Yeah. Ooh, or gets a little extra rally. Um, yeah, you, uh, you know, you, you, you go from the, the strange, awkward real as you almost like back, you know, backpedal your way off this cliff, but mid dive, you shift into this doom fish, you know, vapor real, uh, as you suddenly have all the swarthiness of the, the most fearsome sea creatures, uh, you know, you hear a splash in the water shh, as you land, you know, you're able to breathe, um, you have gills and you have, uh, those natural weapons. Shh, what do you do? That's alter self is a is a as action, correct? It is an action, yeah. So I'm gonna if I cruise right around here, will, it, will I be in the range of this tentacle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I need to just I need to keep eyes on Thoricus. So I'll go as far as I can go out of its range, and then cunning action hide underwater. Okay, cool, yeah, you kind of use, you know, there's that big surplus of water, you know, where the waterfall lands down. You kind of let yourself get lost in that in that water as you just kind of ride the current of the waves, um, you know, in this in this aquatic form that you take. Um, go ahead and give me a, a stealth check. Even though oh, with you, it's like... Me? Yeah. Oh, for the 39. You never know. There's always that time. It's true. It always happens. And it's those moments that we wait for. Where you're like, yeah. oh, you're super good. It's, that's how it works for me all the time. Oh, you're super good at this thing? You, that's what you suck at. It, oh, you have no skill in this ability? You rolled the 19. 17? All right. Um, I am, uh, I think I, I just got an error message. So I'm just going to uh, refresh my browser right quick. Uh, but a 17 is definitely good enough. Just one good enough, actually, so that you know. <laughs> um, but yes, you are, as, you know, at least as far as you know, you are hidden. One of every Dungeon Master's favorite words to say. As far as you know. All right, so uh, again, that's why I'm still considering rolling self checks for you guys. I'm going back and forth on that. Um, all right, so sweet, Vaporeal, you're, you're kind of hiding in this in this little embankment around where the the rapids of the water go. Um, if that is at the end of your turn. Uh, yes, sir. It is. Sorry, I froze up again. Oh. Old habits die hard. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's yeah. like, that, that's what we're here for, bro. It's like, did you catch that sick real freeze last week, bro? <laughs> he hasn't frozen for a while. Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> but no, right. I'm, I'm good to go. 
All right, so Brunor, we're back to the top of initiative. You, uh, you know, you're kind of standing on this island at the base of this wizard's tower. You've seen the green beam of energy. You hear the crows uh, calling from within, um, but uh, but that's that's where you stand. You see, Divot has turned into a giant shark, and uh, you see his prowling, yeah. shadowy form at the bottom of the water and every swimming pool I've ever swam in in my entire life. Um, and so, yeah, you you're there you stand. You and Brian still together. What do you do? Um, I give the Bry man a little bit of a wink and he uh, looks up to that top of that tower and does a thick boy breath weapon. Oh, nice. Yeah, you want him to kind of fly up so that he can, uh, so he can blast the inside mm-hmm. of it with fire. Sweet. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, so, yeah, Bruno, you you know, it's like it's, it's like the, the helicopter in the Matrix. It's like you kind of like float up to where the ceiling panels are cracked in the roof, you know, and so that you can look within. And all you really see are like the piercing eyes of a bunch of crows just like bah, 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 hopping around. You see Brian just like shoots this big green breath weapon inside. Um, and it is a DC 11, not a super hard breath weapon to pass, but, uh, Mm-mm. let's see what they get. Cause maybe they roll poor. They roll a crit. Oh, even the bad guys <laughs> get them guys. Whoa, crit. <laughs> well, rules is the rules. All the spare and love and weed. Um, all right. So yes, they, uh, they do manage to pack it. You know, it's not like they don't take anything. They take half of the 19. Bruno, you watch inside as like the green fire from Brian's mouth just shoots forward and illuminates the inside. As the kind of fire burns, you see several of these crows just engulfed in the green flame. They all just kind of caw and die. You see probably like 40 crows uh, just got roasted by this fire. But you still see several moving around inside. It's like when you turn a light on in a dark room and there's roaches everywhere and they all scatter. You see these crows start kind of pinning themselves into the dark corners of this this uh, kind of attic of this tower. Um, but you did see the fire illuminated this this green beacon in the middle of the room. You know, it's shining with the same color of energy that was shot from the orb. The crows that had surrounded it are now gone. You know, they're all dead at the base of it. Uh, so if you're you know if you're looking inside, you see this kind of like green floating thing, and then all these crows around the border of the uh, of the room. Okay, um, I don't hear or see any chains anywhere. You do not hear chains, no. Fucking ocean turd. Um, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to um, run and jump up off of Brian uh, to climb into this tower and then send Brian to Tina. All right, Cause... sweet. So you're jumping into the tower, right? You're, you're hopping into yeah. the little attic area. Okay, maybe, I, I know you're not trained in it, but make me an arcana check, Bruno. Well. It might not be great, but you know. I'm rolling, so it probably <laughs> will be. <laughs> That's a, so, um, Brunor, you do, you're not really sure how it works, but you're pretty sure that this beacon thing in the center of the room, you know, you might be able to uh, to control it. There would certainly be a check involved to do so, but you're, you're like, hmm, maybe I could shoot that big beam of energy. You know, you're kind of like looking at it. You know, it's just this big beacon in the room that has some, some rune scryed on, but it's glowing with magic and you're just like, yeah, maybe if I like pointed it or whatever, you're not sure. Again, you're not a magic person. Uh, and so, you know, the Brunor is just, it, it's Brunor up there. And uh, and so, yeah. but you, you, you do see that with with your knowledge of Arcana, having spent so much time with, with magic people. Um, you, uh, you, you, you know, you kind of land and you see the beacon, you're looking around and you see all the crows in the rooms, in the room around you. They just start like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> You know, you kind of like bat them away as they kind of fly near you and stuff. And then you see they start swarming over to this corner of the room where there's this big black cloak just hanging off a hook. And you see as probably a hundred crows flap inside of the cloak. You watch the cloak wrap around them. And you're standing face to face and again, Bruno, because you're the one who actually heard of some of these ones. So this strange creature uh, you may have seen before, you, you, you see this just floating cloak 
and peering through this small seam of the black cloaked eyes that you can see within, you just see hundreds of crow eyes moving around, little flitters of feathers falling out from the bottom of it. But you see as this form starts floating forward as a, as a creature of its own. You're like, kind of see it. You look back behind you and uh, you see Tin of Smooth Hands, you know, standing on the river bank. You see the, the, the mist of the waterfall just like shh, cascading by her. You can't help but see like the rainbow reflections of the light of the strange waterfall as she in her benevolence stands on the edge of this uh, embankment looking down on the water below her. You know, you see Divot swimming around in the water. Thoracus, you know, wrapped up by this, this large tentacle. And then Brunor, you turn and you see this giant anchor explode through the stomach of Tina Smooth Hands. You hear the echoing of chains. And you look, you watch the, you know, she looks down, you know, her hands dripping, you know, she tries to kind of start healing herself. But you see the great wound of this anchor having blown through the entire center section of her body. Suddenly you hear the great racking of chains. You see the anchor pulls back. The hooks catch the flesh of the sides of Tina Smooth Hands, and she is drug back up the river. And that's where we're going to pick it up next time, guys. Whoa. Yeah, what? <laughs> wow, wow. Absolutely excuse me. Absolutely excuse me. Oh, absolutely excuse me. I have Looking a bit of a tummy ache, guys. Ooh, buddy. Ooh, buddy. All right, guys. Oh, God, I just, there's a look that you guys get on your faces sometimes, and it's like, it's like you hate me, but uh, you love it. You love it, but it's like, man, that fucking son of a... And I'm ha- that's where I like to live, baby. Guys, this... Uh, I Seriously, I say it every week, but I mean it so damn much. I fucking love playing d with you guys so much. I cannot wait to get to the crazy shit that is happening next. Um, but to see that, you'll have to come join us next Tuesday here, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Tuesday. Uh, at twitch.tv backslash art heart studios you can catch the re-up of this sesh over on youtube backslash art heart studios as well my thanks and love to our amazing cast for all that they do oh my god the most fun people to play dnd with if you ever get a chance to play dnd with all five of these people at the same time do it fucking do it but we do have us a little ritual we like to do around here buds maybe you've heard about it maybe you haven't but we like to take a lighter like this one right here. Make sure we're not gonna light any of our friends, family, or household pets on fire and go. The lighter's up. Mm. Thank you for playing D&D with us, guys. We fucking love you.